was in May five years ago. Davey Allison won his first NASCAR Winston Cup race at Talladega Super Speedway. He was a 26-year-old rookie then, and the victory came on a day when the Allison family had earlier been faced with adversity. His dad, Bobby, had crashed hard, nearly flying into the grandstand. Davey drove by the accident and saw what had happened, yet continued with determination to the winner's circle. His proudest moment, perhaps, was earlier this year when he won the Daytona 500. After that victory, a series of crashes, the worst at Pocono, sent him to the hospital with multiple injuries. Yet he didn't miss starting a single event. Emotionally, things worsened for Davey and the Allison family. In August, his younger brother Clifford gave his life at Michigan to the sport of racing. It seems impossible that a driver could go on after losing a brother and experiencing horrifying crashes, but Davey Allison is going on, and today will seek the greatest financial reward of his career, $1 million. As he pursues his dream, he'll try to put behind him the memories of the recent past. Life deals us a set of cards. We have to go out and make the best out of it. One of the cards that we got dealt was the loss of Clifford at Michigan. But that's in the past now, and I know that he would want us to go on and, and work hard and work with the same enthusiasm, and that's what we're going to do. And, you know, in a way, there's something missing, but what's missing is helping to fuel the fire that's burning right now. I've seen a lot of wrecks in this business. I've seen a lot of bad wrecks, and I've, I've seen some that weren't so bad looking as, as the wreck that I was in at Pocono. Some of the, the ones that weren't so bad looking, people didn't walk away from. And I don't recall many of them that looked worse than what I, our wreck looked or appeared that people did walk away from. So I, I got to thinking about that. And there was a message being sent to me that there's a reason why I'm still here. And that's the part of me that's different. By looking back on it now, I think, yeah, maybe there was something being sent to me you know, through the little wrecks at Daytona in practice, here in the race, Martinsville, Charlotte, Sears Point. You know, something was trying to tell me something along the way, and then in Pocono, just wake up, you know, open your ears, open your eyes. And, you know, I, I don't know what the future holds, but whatever it is, I'm going to try my best to do it right. They're doing good, you know, they, they have had their ups and downs over the last couple weeks, especially my mom has had some really tough times. And if I could send a message to any one person out there in this world, you know, that I probably haven't done enough, well, not even probably, I know I haven't done it enough, is that's to tell her, hi, thinking about you, I love you, and we're going to be there for you. I'd find it hard to, to sit here right now and say, yeah, that's the mission. Um, if somehow that could be turned into something that would be a positive influence on other people or several other people or whatever, if one good thing develops out of that for somebody else, then I'd say, yeah, maybe that was part of it. It's hard work, dedication, a great team that, that enjoys each other's company in the shop and outside the shop, and I think determination that is beyond any level I've ever seen. You are looking live at Davey Allison as he sits poised in his race car, hoping to do something that he has never done before, win at Darlington. If he does today, he'll capture the Winston Million, given to the driver who can win three of four selected NASCAR Winston Cup races. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to give the command to start today's race is our Grand Marshal, the Governor of Arkansas, Governor Bill Clinton. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, start your engine. If he is to win today, Davey Allison will have to battle the tough racetrack and 37 other drivers in order to win the million dollars. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports.
Motor Sports coverage presents Speed World. Today, live from Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina, it's the Mountain Dew Southern 500. And thousands of race fans have come here for this traditional Labor Day event and to see if Davey Allison can win the bonus. The weather here is warm, humid, cloudy, 81 degrees, 80% humidity, and there is a 70% chance of rain this afternoon. Allison hopes to accomplish something that he has never done before, and that is win at Darlington. The Winston Million has only been captured once. That was by Bill Elliott in 1985. Bill Elliott is racing into the record books. Bill Elliott is going for immortality. Bill Elliott gets the checkered flag. Bill Elliott has won an additional $1 million in 1985. That was seven years ago, and we'll know in about four hours if Davey can do it for the second time. The points, the quest for the cup standings. Bill Elliott is on top by 109 over Allison, but only two drivers in the top five have ever won here at Darlington, Elliott and fourth place, Harry Gant. This track has been called many things over the years, including too tough to tame. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Bob, and hello, everyone. You know, in recent years, Darlington has been known for its streakers. No, not the naked guys that run in front of the camera. We're talking about drivers who win consecutive races. Remember, one year ago today, handsome Harry Gant, that same Oldsmobile back there, began a win streak of four in a row. And his nickname, Mr. September. And back early in the spring, the driver to the right of me here, the Budweiser Ford driver, Bill Elliott, began, ended his streak of winning four in a row. Both those drivers would like to have a new streak begin today, as would other experienced drivers. And talking about a lot of experience, let's go upstairs to Ned and Benny. I cannot believe trying to win a million dollars at this racetrack, Ned. I tell you, it's a tough one, Benny. You know, there are tracks that you race, and there are tracks that you pace. And this is definitely one you pace. Bristol last week, Bill Elliott did a great job, paced himself. And I'm telling you, this is a racetrack you really have to be careful all day. Well, there's so many places that you can get in trouble on this racetrack. It's basically a one-groove racetrack. And if something happens in front of you, there's not much room to dodge it. You don't see many one-car accidents here, as you well know. And sometimes you cause the accident that starts the crash. Well, I think one thing they'll be concerned about here today is tires. Now, Goodyear has a good radial tire here, but the pavement is so abrasive here. The tires slow down considerably, and it wouldn't surprise me to see them maybe a different kind of strategy here, maybe like Harry Gant employed back in the spring where he was stopping every 45 laps, long before he would need gas. So it'll be interesting to see who does pace and who does race. But there's one fellow that we can rest assured that'll be in the race category. For more on that, here's John Kernan. You guys can talk about million-dollar bonuses and streaks all you want, but for pole sitter Sterling Marlin, he's not concerned with any of that. The only thing he is concerned with today, surviving and winning this race. Sterling, five poles this year, but he has yet to visit victory lane during his entire Winston Cup career. Not only does he want to win today's race, guys, he told me this morning that he almost feels that he has to win but he knows the job at hand he's got to be careful he can't push the car too hard here at darlington or he'll wind up in the wall but there is one bonus he does have a chance to win bob and of course that's the unical bonus for starting from the pole if you can also win the race that's up to fifty three thousand two hundred dollars there's sterling marlin on the pole for the fifth time in the 1992 season Governor Bill Clinton is the Grand Marshal of uh, today's race. He is riding in that first pace car on the track as the field comes down to complete one of a couple uh, pace laps. Now here is the diehard starting lineup for today's race. Pole sitter is Marlin, 162.249, the Maxwell House Coffee Ford, car number 22. Ernie Irvin starts alongside in the Kodak film Chevrolet, car number 4. In the second row, it's Ken Schrader from Fenton, Missouri in the Kodiak Chevrolet car number 25. And then Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia in the Budweiser Ford car number 11. Daryl Waltrip starts in fifth position in the Western Auto Chevrolet car 17. Then number 28, the Haviland Ford driven by Davey Allison from Hueytown, Alabama. In row number four, it's Jimmy Hensley in the Trop Arctic Ford number 66. And alongside will be Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Ford car number 26. Alan Kowicki starts in ninth position in the Hooters Ford car number 7. Then Shimong, New York's Jeff Bodine in the Motorcraft Ford car number 15. Eleven starting position goes to the number 33 Skull Bandit Oldsmobile driven by Harry Gant. 
Wally Dallenbach occupies starting position number 12 in the Keystone Ford car 16. Dale Earnhardt starts in 13th position in the GM Goodwin Chevrolet car number 3 and then Dick Trickle in the Snickers Ford car number 8. As you look at the rest of the starting lineup, the field is coming down for its second warm-up lap. The pace car uh, still has the field in tow and we should be going green next time around. Well, we see some off the good drivers far back in the field. Mark Martin, Morgan Shepard. Only one round of qualifying here on Friday afternoon. It rained the second round qualifying out yesterday. And we might make note that Mark Martin, Morgan Shepard, Kyle Petty are all pitting on the backstretch. And as we've said before, some of these telecasts pitting on the backstretch is a definite disadvantage. A decided disadvantage because you have to wait for all the fellows on the front pit to, to stop, change their tires, and then you go in. You simply start behind all the guys pitting on the front. Three in-car cameras for you this afternoon. Jimmy Hensley had an excellent qualifying performance. Morgan Shepard will also carrying one of our in-car cameras. And for the first time that I can remember, the uh, in-car camera, the roof cam on Dale Earnhardt's car. Man, this ought to be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Riding with him. The 1.366 miles in length is Darlington International Raceway. The pole speed was 162.2 at 30.31 seconds. We'll go 367 laps, and the field is separated by just under three seconds. Darlington International Raceway pits, as Ned indicated, both on the front stretch and on the back stretch. And that uh, picture there of the track is pretty accurate. Turns one and two are much sharper than turns three and four. Yeah, I talked to Harold Brazen, to the constructor, constructor of the racetrack, and he told me there was a fish pond down off turn two. He couldn't disturb. That's why the racetrack is egg-shaped. Look at the crowd. They're on their feet waving as the green flag waves, and the Mountain Dew Southern 500 rolls in Darlington. What a magnificent start. And a good start for Ernie Irvin as he's grabbed the lead coming out of turn two. Here comes Davey Allison on the inside trying to get back. Cannot make the move. Trying to pass Schrader for fourth position. Lap number one is about to be completed. Ernie Irvin leads Sterling Marlin. Davey Allison still trying to find fourth position from Ken Schrader. Allison is Daryl Waltrip and Brett Bodine. There's the battle for second position as Bill Elliott has closed right in on Sterling Marlin for second. Team cars, Sterling Marlin, National House car, Bill Elliott, the Budweiser car, both these cars at a Junior Johnson shop up in Wolf County, North Carolina. Bill would like to get up there and lead early if he can to get five bonus points. Now Dale Earnhardt begins his move, going to the inside of the 66 car, Jimmy Hensley. Earnhardt started back in 13th position. There's Hensley on the outside, but this is give and take racetrack. Hensley got to back off. He wisely does that. Let's Earnhardt have the position. And look at Labonte, two abreast going through turn three already. Earnhardt moved into 11. There's Labonte and Wally Dahlenbach side by side. Now Dahlenbach gets out ahead. Dick Frickle and the Snickers Ford right there also. This is Jimmy Hensley's bumper cam looking back on Wally Dahlenbach. There's Dahlenbach to Keystone Deer Ford. Position, good qualifying effort for Wally. Ernie Urban has jumped out to a healthy lead over Marlon and Elliott here in the first five laps. And now Elliott tries to take second away from Marlon, but that's not the place to be in turn three. Marlon just drove in there on the outside of him, wouldn't give up the, the spot. Davy Allison runs in fifth. Remember last Saturday night? This is about exactly the way it was. Ernie Irvin had quite a lead and lost it by himself coming off the second corner. 
I tell you what, I know he, that had to be embarrassing. That's probably what he's thinking right now. Keep this car going straight. Six laps completed now with Urban out front. We're glad that we're part of your Labor Day 1992 weekend. We are live from Darlington, South Carolina. Back in a moment. Two days only. Save 10 to 50% on every gallon of paint at Sears. Exterior paint as low as $4.99 a gallon. Interior paint as low as $4.49 a gallon. But hurry. <laughs> this sale ends Monday at Sears. A noble warrior advised the art of protection springs from within. One must stay vigilant against one's unfragrant perspiration, lest one provoke a hostile response. Thus, a Norse ritual is right guard sportsman. An aromatic array of the precious scents and maximum protection against disarming wetness. Confirming the wisdom, the best defense <laughs> is not to offend. Right guard sports stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Top of the line parts, expert advice. That's your Big A Auto Parts store. Big A, the sign that keeps your car running right. Things are different. The new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not Accord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumers Digest named Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac Grand Am. A new kind of driving excitement. Challenge is coming up in today's race. The driver leading at the halfway lap will win $10,000, and a fan at home will have a chance to win a beautiful Chevrolet Lumina Z34. If you have entered the contest for today's race and your entry is selected and you're called at home, you must name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge. If you want to enter the contest for next week's Miller Genuine Draft 400 on uh, Friday, September, or rather Saturday, September 12th, write to Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 337-31-2246. You must be 18 years of age or older, and we must receive your entry by Friday, September the 11th to be eligible for next week's Gillette Halfway Challenge. Sterling Marlin has taken the lead and begins to now draw the lead out. And Bill Elliott has taken over second position, but Urban gets it back at the end of the backstretch. I'm telling you, you just mentioned Bill Elliott's name. He lost the spot. Bob, <laughs> Ernie Urban blew right by him. It looked like Urban had lost the handle. Car got a little loose, pushed or something, but now he seems to be coming back. And Schrader, yep, trying to make a bid on him. Schrader is Davey Allison. Looks like Davey was really pumped at the beginning of the race, Ned, to go charge and take some spot away, some spots away. But I think right now he just content to settle in and get a few hundred miles under his belt and then try to win the million dollars. I think that would be a smart thing for him to do. I believe that is what he's doing. He has a good race car. Now he moves, makes a move on Ken Schrader. Schrader goes a little high, so he moves over and takes the position. He's Davey fourth. Allison up to fourth now. Marlon leaves, Irving second. Then Elliott, then Allison, and Schrader. Harry Gant has been doing well in the first few laps. There he is running right behind Brett Bodine, who is behind Darrell Waltrip. Gant started 11th. It's 
Now up to ninth position. This is Harry and Daryl Walter. This is their kind of race track because they're very patient people, and you have to be fellow. Here, Davey's trying to take that third spot away from Phil. Those are the two battling for the Winston Cup points lead. Only 109 separate Elliott and Allison. Elliott, of course, has the lead. Davy gets the position, however, from Bill. And Davy Allison now moves to third as Ken Schrader also tries to pass Bill Elliott on the low side in turn four. These guys are really feeling their ways. Cody Schrader backed off, let Elliott go. There's just no point in taking the chances early in the race to eliminate your chances of winning. Ooh, Bill Four. Elliott comes down and comes across the front end of Schrader's car. Now here comes Harry on the inside of Schrader. And Harry has come from 13th. Now all the way up to 5th. He is definitely on the move since we talked about him just a moment ago, Bob. He's picked us about 4 minutes. Handling is the key here at Darlington, and that Oldsmobile always handles them. That piece of tape waving on Schrader's car as it came down the front straightaway. Looks like one of the decals on the hood of the car has come loose, and that's waving as he goes down the straightaways. Now Gant tries to take fourth from Elliott. That wasn't very hard. Well, Elliott knew that Gant was faster. He had been coming up on him, and so he didn't put up much resistance, not, as Benny says, not taking any chances at this point of the race. Schrader now tries to take the spot away from Bill Elliott. So Schrader will hold on to fifth and Elliott fourth. Yeah, that piece of tape there on Schrader's car is blowing quite a bit. You'd think it'd finally come off, but <laughs> keeps on waving. And there is Davey Allison. I tell you, he might be the fastest car on the racetrack right now. He got by Bill Elliott, and he is on the move. He's gaining on Ernie Irvin, and also I think he's gaining on Sterling Marks. I think he might be too, Benny. He's definitely gaining on uh, Ernie Irvin. Here's this battle. Kenny Schrader finally making a move on the inside of Bill Elliott. Here comes Brett Bodine. He wants to move around as well. There's Alan Kowicki. A couple of Fords moving around to Ford. Jeff Bodine also another Ford back there behind Alan Kowicki. So Elliott has lost four or five spots here just in the last lap or two. And look at Jeff Bodine go right on by Kowicki. But more motorcraft Ford that Jeff Bodine driving. Looks like it's handling well here in the early stages. Bud Moore, Moore's cars always seem to run well here in Darlington. Of course, he's been coming here since 1950, 1950, I guess, which was the first year they came here. He's been racing here for a long, long time. He's had, had some wins along the way. The leader is now Sterling Marlin. Second is Irvin, and third is Davey Allison early in the 367 lap Mountain Dew Southern 500 from Darlington. I drive a race car for a living. I depend on the parts and pieces in my car, and I feel so confident knowing that Penzoil is protecting the moving parts inside of my engine. Penzoil's quality and protection give me the confidence I need to do my job without second thought. The protection that Penzo offers this race team makes us feel great. That's why I have the confidence to use it on the street and in my race car. I recommend Penzo to everybody. Penzo, performance, protection, quality. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. The pennant chase is in your face on ESPN. What a play! See our Tuesday night twin bills. Oh! 
Wednesday night excitement, Friday night doubleheader. And America's Game of the Week, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Sunday night, speedster Ricky Henderson sparks the first place athletics against Wade Boggs and the Red Sox live on America's Game of the Week, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Back at Darlington International Raceway, we're on top of the GM Goodrich Chevrolet, driven by Dale Earnhardt as he makes his way up through the field. He just passed Darrell Walter the lap before, and now he goes by Bill Elliott. So Bill dropping back in the pack. He's now back, Bill Elliott, back to the ninth spot, 10th spot. Ten spot. Yes. And John Kernan has a comment on Walter. See Darrell Walter sliding backwards ever so slightly. He uh, was passed by Dale Earnhardt just moments ago. Darrell has radioed in and told Jake Elder and the crew that the car is very loose as he comes off the turn. He wants to put some wedge in the left rear when they come in and change four tires on their first pit stop. You know, a lot of the teams were concerned because they only had 15 minutes of practice yesterday. So you saw a lot of teams, a lot of the team members were scratching their heads. Well, maybe we'll try this spring, maybe that spring, this shot, that shot. This sway bar, that sway bar. A lot of question marks out there as far as handling. It looks like those front two or four cars have hit it right on the money. Well, Darrell drops back to uh, 11th position. Mark Martin is the man on the move. He now goes into ninth position, and he started 25th. And it's not easy to pass on this race track. And you make that kind of move for the 27 laps that we've run here so far. Very, very impressive. And just afternoon, he did the same thing in the bush race. Started dead last. 36 laps, took the lead. But today, Mark Martin has to pit on the back. Ned and I touched about it at the top of the show, and we're going to show you when you start making pit stops, green caution flag pit stops, what a disadvantage that Mark Martin has on the back. Won't hurt him as far as green flag pit stops are concerned, but yellow flag pit stops, it will definitely be a disadvantage for you. Our first Fran Field summary. For those of you not familiar with ESPN's motorsports coverage, we try to do this every 10 minutes at least to let you know where your favorite driver is running, and this is not several laps ago. This is the order as they cross the line, last lap, a lap ago. Well, Davey Allison is definitely closing in on Ernie Irvin. Davey has performed well here in the early going. He is third. Here's Jerry Punch. Most race drivers, like most athletes indeed, are, are quite superstitious. And we got to remember back when Bill Elliott won the Winston Million in 1985, he had his number on the roof painted on upside down. When they built this brand new car for Davey, they likewise said, hey, we believe in superstition. We're going to put our number on upside down. It's supposed to face the inside of the track. If you look at the top of the 28, it faces you guys on the outside. How about that? I would have never noticed that. <laughs> caught Ernie, but uh, has not been able to pass him yet for a second. What's the number on the roof for anyway, Ned? The scores in the stands so they can see that as they go by sometimes? They sit above the car? Yeah, especially on these super high banked racetracks. Yes, it does give them a, just another spot that they can pick up in case they can't see the number on the side. to hear this boy's head. Here's Brett Bodine trying to move up. 26 passing 25. Ken Trisher. Brett gets the job done at the end of the back stretch. Takes over sixth place. Here comes Kowicki. Our sixth, seventh, eighth. 25 car. Kenny's rate of the orange and white seven is Alan Kowicki. Kowicki started ninth, so he's staying right in the same area. In eighth position. And there's Mark Martin. He's not staying in the same <laughs> area. He continues to move up. He was just amazing during that uh, bush race yesterday. Davey Allison takes second from Ernie Irvin. And look, Harry Gant has caught this pack of cars, these two cars. We're looking at second, third, fourth. Fastest car on the racetrack about two or three minutes ago. That might be Harry Gant right now. The sun is shining brightly here in Darlington right now, so this racetrack sometimes can get a little slick as the race goes on, especially when the sun is shining down on this black asphalt. 
and causes the cards to slip and slide a little bit. Let's see. The kind of conditions we normally see here at Darling yeah. Labor Day weekend. <laughs> You know, the strange thing is, as we watch these cars, they look perfectly. They look like they're just handling perfectly. The car looks so stable, but they're not stable. These guys are really having to fight the wheel inside the race car. The drivers are. Well, the Big A Auto Parts on track interval will show you how Harry Gant is one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Ooh, Jim Sauter, car number 71, got out of the way and let these guys go at it. Bernie Irvin got by Davey Allison. Allison didn't like that too much. He said, I believe this Ford belongs out front of that car at least. He puts her right back in there. So meanwhile, while these fellows have been racing and trading this position back a couple of times, Sterling Marlin has pulled out to another second or so advantage, so he's probably got a two or three second advantage now. There we go. That's much better. Here's your big day auto parts on track interval. We time lapse 24 through 28, comparing the Marlin, the leader, and Harry Gann, who was coming up through the traffic. There you can see very clearly that the interval was closed from 3.6 seconds on lap 24 to 2.8 on lap 28. Gant on the move. Yeah, about two tenths of a second to lap. Hey, yeah, who's up on? Yep. <laughs> Coaches right up on the back bumper of that, and there we saw the car wiggle a little bit. That's the first time we see the car wiggle, and he started to lose the back end as he came off the corner. And now we're on the rear spoiler of the Kodak Film Chevrolet. Dave Allison to pull away a little bit once he got back around, and here comes Gant. Boy, he makes that look easy. Man, he just blew right by Ernie, and we can see Ernie's car getting looser and looser as he comes off the corner. So now Harry Gant moves to third. Look at this. Bill Elliott, on the other hand, is getting past, and the caution flag comes out for the first time this afternoon. We look around the track quickly and don't see any car in trouble. Could be for debris on the racetrack in any case. At 37 laps, the caution is coming out. Here's Jerry with a report on Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott had gone from fourth to 21st starting spot, and this caution is going to be a break for him. His car was getting so loose he couldn't drive it. In fact, they were thinking about making a pit stop and thought he might have a tire going down. So sometimes he better be lucky than good early in a race, and Elliott got a break with this yellow flag coming out. He had almost, within about another seven or eight laps, could have been left by his teammate, Sterling Marlin. But now he'll get a chance to pit and four fresh tires. Bob? Yeah, there are a lot of drivers out there that are glad to see this caution so they can come in and get some uh, handling adjustments made. And the funniest thing in the world, Doyle Ford, the official flagman from NASCAR, when he took the yellow flag out to start waving it, got it hung on the flagging stand and got it and almost hit the caution flag waving. <laughs> well, here they come down pit road. Everybody will be coming down pit road. Let's go to the pits and Jerry. Activity here in the pits as Davey Allison comes in the pits. Everyone on pit road down pit road 28 on the bottom of your screen, 22 on top. A pair of Ford teams going at it right side on the 22. Now the left side, likewise, the left side of the 28 car. The have one Ford trying to win one million dollars. It's finally Bill Elliott just now pulls in the pits, but you're watching Sterling Marlin's Junior Johnson team. Marlin is out first, Davey's out second, and Harry Gant right behind him. Here comes Brett Bodine, and then Ernie Irvin as they all rush back to turn one. We're under caution for the first time today here at Darlington Raceway. 38 laps complete. Lots more racing to come. Here with us back after this. Look for the sign. Top of the line parts. Red, blue, and white. Expert advice. It's a good sign. Your Big A Auto Parts store. Keeps your car running right. Where the pros go for auto parts. Big A. The sign that keeps your car running right. Someone to depend on when you need to depend on your car. 
The North Brothers ride again to get you a better deal on a quality used car. That's right. We're on the trail again, getting you the best used car deals. Like take, for instance, this 1994 Festiva, just 99 down, 93 a month. Or this huge Skyhawk, loaded, just 149 down, 155 a month. Better deals on better used cars at North Brothers Ford. We're so sure about them, we'll let you bring them back for seven days. North Brothers Ford on Ford Road, minutes west of Telegraph Westland. I tell you what, we've got to get taller cars and shorter horses. Stonebridge is a new championship golf course and residential community of scenic beauty, three miles south of the Michigan football stadium, next to Ann Arbor. Experience country living among meandering streams, ponds, and gently rolling hills. Stonebridge has detached condominium villas on the golf fairways and home sites that are half an acre with underground utilities, sewer, water, and paved roads. We have 10 builders ready to customize a home to your desires. Experience Stonebridge. Coming up this afternoon on ESPN, you'll see a horse race like you've never seen one before. ESPN's Jockey Can makes its debut at the Arlington Million. It's Budweiser racing to the Breeders' Cup, live from Arlington Heights, Illinois, at 5 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Speed World today in Darlington, South Carolina, for the Mountain Dew Southern 500. Under caution for the first time this afternoon. And the field comes down and will to see Nella take at least one more lap under the caution. Sterling Marlin won the race out of the pits. Davy Allison will restart second. We're going to take another break while we can here, while the uh, action is confined to the pit area, and be back with racing here at Darlington. when you need to haul something, tow something, carry precious cargo, find new trails, or simply ride high and proud. There's nothing quite as strong as a truck. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. What makes a mountain man a mountain man? Let's find out. Must a mountain man be a big burly guy with an ax? A man of steel? Hmm. Must a mountain man even be a man? Actually, the only requirement is the right beer. Smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and learn what makes the typical mountain man anything but. Getting set for a restart here at Darlington, Bill Elliott had been going the wrong way to the back of the field before we had that caution, and Jerry can tell us why that was happening. Jerry? I told you Elliott was lucky. Look how lucky he really was. This is what's left of his right rear tire. It had a nail hole in it, and the tire was going down, and it was literally ripping the rubber off the carcass inside. Now, this is not a defect in the Goodyear tire. Nothing wrong with the Goodyear. The tire was being deflated because it had a hole, and during deflation, it was literally ripping the rubber off. Elliott was maybe a lap and a half, maybe two laps away from biting the concrete. Back upstairs. Well-timed caution period for Bill Elliott and for several others. Man, man. Back in 23rd position right now. And Benny, you talked about Mark Martin pitting on the back stretch. What did he do? Went from 6 to 20, 20. 6 to 20. He lost 14 spots by pitting on the back. And who got the black flag? Somebody getting the black flag. It looks like Mike Potter, maybe, who has land sponsorship here. Morgan McClure engine in his car. Group cam of Dale Earnhardt. Right behind Brett Bodine, running in fifth position. Dale is. As Harry Gent closed up right on the back bumper of Davy Austin. As it gets to turn two, I thought he was going to blow right by him, but now Dave is pulled out to about a car length advantage. There's Earnhardt on the inside of Brett Bodine. Off of corner four, they'll race hey, down the straightaway. Here comes Ernie Irvin. Three abreast down the straightaway into turn one. What's going to give? Irvin passes both. Oh, boy. Wow, wow. You know, Brett Bodine wisely just backed out of that situation. <laughs> so that's not the thing we're doing here right now. Up front, 
a three car train involving Sterling Marlin, Davey Allison, and Harry Gant. Davey Allison wants that five points. He's on the inside, but he backs off, wisely backed off. Yeah, that's the spot you can really get in trouble. You can pass there, as we just saw the last lap around, but you're taking a chance. There's Mike Potter in the Lance car, number 77, down on the inside. New sponsorship on that car, Brett Bodine, Alan Kowicki, and Ricky Rudd. Now Rudd tries to pass Kowicki. Kowicki tried to get alongside Brett Bodine up in the corner and lost some momentum, and that's the other cars closed up on the back number. Here's Davey one more time trying it. Cannot get underneath that 22 car. Same spot on the racetrack. He again looked to the inside and turned four, but wisely backed off. Stayed in second spot. Here's a great battle involving several cars. Rusty Wallace is right there in the middle of genuine draft Pontiac, car number two. But here's the action from the bumper cam as we look back on Brett Bodine and Alan Kowicki. Oh, they touched. <laughs> I hate to have my finger between those two cars. There you go. Nice. about Mark Martin and how because he was pitting on the back stretch had dropped from 6th back to 20th. Here is Bill Elliott who is trying to work his way back up through traffic. And Mark Martin is at the just ahead of Elliott and Kyle Petty. You see Hutch Strickland, great mass, Bill Elliott. There's Martin. He is 17th. Mark has moved up to 17th. Right behind Derek Cope in the Pure Later Chevrolet. Mark, before was able to drive under these cars right here and accelerate off. And he started to just couldn't quite accelerate the way he wanted to. Has to fall back. If you've been keeping up with Winston Cup rumors, one rumor was put to bed this weekend as Mark Martin announced that he would stay with Jack Roush for next year. Here is a battle for the lead again, and this time Davey Allison will try down at the end of the racetrack between turns one and two. He can almost pull alongside Sterling Marlin, but cannot do it. Almost, but not quite. Yeah, the press release I read said that uh, he, had been, he was signed with Jack Roush through 1995 the driver of the Babylon 4. Gentlemen, as we saw the rundown there, we saw Jeff Bodine. Back in the third of the he made a late pit stop just as the, the lap before the green flag came out. Tightened the wheel or something that is bad as far as track position is concerned. All the way back about fifth or sixth, about fourth or fifth when the caution flag came out. So he's another car that lost a lot of ground. And then Davey Allison takes it. Will get the lead now on the back stretch. Heading into turn number three. Allison has the lead. Marlin still right there, though. The crowd is on its feet. They are cheering wildly as he comes down the main straightaway. Davey will lead this lap, pick up the five bonus points. And a lot of people are sensing, yes, we could see the million dollar bonus ended out here this afternoon. This car is good, but so is that number 33 you see in the picture there. And Harry again will be the record with before this race is over. Here comes Sterling Marlin back now that Davey has 
you see that five bone across, he might just back off and ride behind these three or four cars. What did I say? Well, uh, that a boy, David. <laughs> you just like I tell you to do, David. That's it. <laughs> the lead changes hands three times. On the track, you can't pass him. All right. <laughs> First four are running right together like they're tied together with a chain. And we're talking about inches, inches, and hearts. Allison, Marlon, Gant, and now Ernie Irvin shows his three and takes over third. This is blown by Harry Hughes. And Bill Elliott is also moving up. Such tripping in the best is Ford that he's passing. And here comes Rick Mast on the inside of Strickland. Kyle Petty will try the same move. Well, they got that guy at a disadvantage. They're just going to kill him, aren't they? <laughs> got him hung up there. Well, they only moved him to the 19th position, or 18th position there. Definitely. And once again, Sterling Marlin makes a bid to retake the lead down the backstretch and look at Ernie Irvin. He wants the lead, and he will get it. Wow. There he goes up, and Sterling's going to come back on the inside. How many times have we seen Here comes there again, taking third spot away. Davey goes from leading the fourth in the matter of a few feet, Allison back to fourth position. Now they're Marlon, Irvin, Gannon, and Allison. Man, good racing. This could be what this called is known as a barn burner here today. <laughs> we have the makings of one, that's for sure. Glad we took that commercial break there exactly. during that caution. <laughs> We'd have been in trouble. Well, they've settled down here a little bit now, so we will get a break in. But, boy, we've seen some great action in the first 55 laps. 500 from Darlington, Marlin now leads. Plymouth and Canton residents know where to go for a night out on the town. Roman Forum Restaurant. And now Roman Forum is open for lunch Tuesday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. Serving the same Italian and American cuisine they are famous for for the last 14 years. The Roman Forum has facilities for banquet and private parties. Give us a call at 981-2030. We'll be happy to help. Roman Forum is located on Ford Road, one half mile west of I-275. Try our carryout service, a great break from burgers at the office. Stonebridge is a new championship golf course and residential community of scenic beauty, three miles south of the Michigan football stadium, next to Ann Arbor. Experience country living among meandering streams, ponds, and gently rolling hills. Stonebridge has detached condominium villas on the golf fairways and home sites that are half an acre with underground utilities, sewer, water, and paved roads. We have 10 builders ready to customize a home to your desires. Experience Stonebridge. A September to remember on ESPN. you back to Darlington, South Carolina, and the view you have right now, not a good one, particularly if you're Dale Earnhardt and the Goodrich Chevrolet driver. You see Goodrich Chevrolet driver Earnhardt is behind the wall, and let's try to move in here so we can find out exactly what's going on. They are climbing beneath the car to work. Dale is still sitting in the car pulling the wheel. Dale, what happened? What's the problem? That clutch gone out of it. It started busting and slipping. He's busy right now inside the car trying to pull some of the bonnet. They ask him to give him a couple of screwdrivers. He's going to try to pull the cover off the transmission. They are beneath the car. They will try to pull the transmission and fix the clutch. Can you believe it, guys, the kind of luck this team has had in 1992? It hasn't been just one thing. They've had engine problems. They've had clutch problems. They've had just one problem after another. It just it seems like the team is just right now. Snake bitten, I guess is the word is the term I'm thinking of, but I don't know if that fits. But now Elliott and Kyle Petty still running together on the racetrack. They've changed that position several times in the <laughs> last five or six laps. At 17th and 18th, Elliott 17th and Kyle 18th. Kyle Petty, another car that's having to pit on the back straightaway from a terrible, terrible uh, qualifying lap, qualified 30th. Ooh, you remember back in the spring that he came down on the end of the end and made that came off turn. He's trying the same thing again. 
That car looks like it's handling well, especially down the low side of the racetrack. There again, just went around uh, Ernie Irvin for second place. Now Davy Allison trying to take over third from Ernie Irvin. This car seems to go away a little bit after he mm -hmm. runs a while on the tires. Irvin's car you talking about? Yes, yeah. yeah. faded and now we're about eight or ten laps since the last cross was leg and this car starting to fade just a slight bit. Ahead of these two guys, Gant, there in the middle of your screen and on the left is the leader, Sterling Marlin. The pole sitter eligible for $53,200 worth of Unical bonus money. Go ahead. Passed him the last lap, okay. and uh, Mark Martin back up to 11th after coming out of pits in 20th position. Here he comes. Uh, Dale Earnhardt, while he isn't driving the car, will help repair it. He's as busy as anybody else trying to get that clutch fixed. And he knows how to do that, too. He knows that race car. What he's doing right now is taking the shifter off so they can slide the transmission back out of the clutch and put a new clutch in it as Mark Martin takes over the spot, the 10th spot, from Dick Trickle. A lot of speculation since we spoke of the silly season earlier and Mark Martin, the fact that he's staying with Jack Brown. The uh, Stavola brothers, the number eight Snickers car, no driver has been uh, assigned to that car definitely for 1993. A lot of rumors floating though, Bob. A lot of rumors. And the one that you hear most of all is that, uh, so who is going to drive that car next year? Sterling Marlin. You hear that Sterling Marlin might. That's, yeah, that's the rumor I hear most yeah. of all. And that the sponsorship may be changed on it. But uh, that's just part of the silly season. Schrader and Terry Labonte. Sonoco, the sponsor on the 94 car, has decided they will not return next year. So Billy Hagen, owner, they're actively pursuing a new sponsor for 94. Here's a Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac. That car has been performing well. We just passed Ricky Rudd a couple of laps ago, so he is. He's in seventh go. right now, and he started 21st. He is definitely moving. Now his sponsorship is locked in with Miller, I believe, in 1996 or something like that. So we're in good shape as far as sponsorship is concerned. Rusty and his team would stay in the same hotel we stayed here in Florence over the weekend. And I tell you what, they all seem to be in great spirits. I mean, seeing them in the restaurant and around, uh, just the entire, they ate together, they stayed together, and it was really a team affair. Now Harry Gant has closed in on Marlin, the leader. This is the battle for the lead. Michigan and Sterling said Harry stroke to that victory. <laughs> what Harry saying to that now? <laughs> not exactly spoken right now, is it? <laughs> but I'll guarantee you that Harry Gant's not punishing that race car yet. He's, he's running it at a comfortable pace, and that might be bad news for the rest of the field. <laughs> Think what he's going to do when he starts moving fast, huh? Yeah. In the spring, Harry Gant drove the tires off that car. Then he second to Bill Elliott. What, didn't he have to stop one more time than Elliott or something like that? Man? He had, uh, they had a strategy of going 45 left, coming in, put on four new tires, regardless of what was happening. And uh, caution flag came out relatively late in the race, which caused him to have to make two pit stops as opposed to one for Elliott. And, and Elliott, on gas mileage, won the race. And Here we go Harry for the Gant. lead. Looking for the lead. Coming off turn two. They'll be side by side down the back stretch. And who will be the leader into turn three? It will be Gant. Now, is he going to go up the hill and Sterling get under him? Well, Sterling thinks so. He's <laughs> going to try it. Ooh. No, backs off. Gant will pick up five bonus points, leading this lap. And Harris, fourth in the point standings. He has a shot at this thing. And he has won four times here at Darlington, dating back to 1983 and as recently as 1991. Harry Gant now leads this race after 69 laps.
working at AutoZone is more than looking up parts or ringing up sales. Most of all, it's, it's listening. Because my customers know more about their cars than I'll ever know. They don't ever rattle by heart. I mean, that car is their baby. So when they've got a problem they're going to fix for themselves, I'm going to do my best to help them get whatever they need, no matter what it takes. Because people like that, they don't deserve anything less than the best I can give them. At Oldsmobile, we know the difference between designing a race car to be fast and designing a race car to be a winner. The new Achieva SCX has an engine that just doesn't know when to quit. Antilock brakes that help make cornering a breeze. And the difference between this winner and the winner you can buy is a wash. The Achieva SCX from Oldsmobile. The power of intelligent engineering. Splitfire earned a United States patent. Splitfire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Splitfire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile. A 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a Splitfire. You'll get more power and more mileage. Or your money back. Get the guaranteed Splitfire advantage at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. Get hooked every Saturday morning on ESPN Outdoors. It's an adventure you won't want to miss. Explore the world's best fishing holes and hunting grounds on ESPN Outdoors. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons back at Darlington, South Carolina, where the Winston Million is on the line for Davy Allison and the Mountain Dew Southern 500. John Kernan and Jerry Puncher down on uh, Pitt Road, working the activity down there on a very hot and humid Sunday afternoon. The man of the day, however, at this point, is Harry Gant. He started 11th, moved up to 9th at the end of 10 laps, was 4th at the end of 30, then was 3rd at the end of 50 laps, and on lap number 74, took the advantage. Mr. September, we're this, at his time of the year, aren't we? Yep, this is where it all began last year. For Harry Gant, when he won four in a row, Sterling Marlin running in second spot, not too far behind. And here is Dale Jarrett passing Ricky Rudd. Dale's doing fine. Dale's having a pretty good run, yeah. He had a next pit stop, a little over 20 seconds, which put him from, he was running in 17th position, putting him up to ninth at that time. And he is ninth right now as he passes uh, Ricky Rudd. Yeah, he dropped back about three or four positions, and now seems to be picking back up a little bit. Alan Kowicki ahead of Dale in eighth. Got to give Mark Martin a call. He's back up to seventh again. And working on Rusty Wallace up there for the sixth place. Yeah. There's Kowicki, the Hooters Ford. Third in the uh, Winston Cup standings. He and Harry Gant have been swapping third and fourth, it seems, about every race. First one will be in third, then the other. Kowicki, 133 behind Bill Elliott. And Gant, 195 behind Bill. The six goes by Rusty Wallace, as we saw Dale Jarrett pass Alan Kowicki. So did Mark Martin pass Rusty Wallace. I tell you what, this valve board is flying. Yep, it really is. He might be as fast as Harry Gant. There's Brett Bodine. Brett having a good run, sitting there in fifth position. The owner of that car, Kenny Burstein, did you see what he did in Indianapolis yesterday? No. 301.2 in his top fuel dragster, Kenny Bernstein. And by the way, yeah. today is Kenny's birthday. Well, and I know he isn't watching, or at least regularly, because he's busy at the U.S. Nationals, but uh, his driver's doing fine. And folks, Bob Jenkins had his 52nd birthday on Friday. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Not quite that many. I'm not quite as old as you are, Kenny. <laughs> Well, we're always saying happy birthday. Well, that's this right. was real, but this wasn't. was for real. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie Irvin and Davey Allison. That's third and fourth. The orange four, Ernie Irvin is third. There's the fourth place car. Davey Allison. I don't know. I, I don't think I could hit the gas with a million bucks. I really don't. I, yeah, you could. You wouldn't even think about it. Like I, that's that. probably, he's probably not thinking about no, it. No, he's not thinking about that right now. And a man of your money shouldn't think about that small as some anyway. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the Skull Bandit Oldsmobile of Harry Gant leads. 
gentleman we thought saw Alan Kowicki there a few moments ago when Dale Jarrett went by. And several other cars have gone by. He's really having a tough time down in turns one and two. Kenny Schrader has gone by now. Dick Trickle has gone by. And Ricky Rudd went by. He's uh, having a big problem in turn two. He just can't get off that turn. But Harry Gant's not having any problems getting off any turn. <laughs> no, he's not having any problems at all. Boy, you, you wonder what would happen if... Harry Gant would have a September in 1992 that he did in 1991 when he came here and won the Southern 500 and then won the next three after that. In 1991, he had one win in the first 20 races. He was 10th in the points and 524 behind the leader. In 1992, he comes in with two victories under his belt, fourth in the points, and only 195 behind the leader. So if he has a September this year as he did last year, he could be the Winston Cup points leader. He will certainly be in the kickoff. He leads the Mountain Dew Southern 500 on a cloudy, overcast, very warm and humid day in Darlington, South Carolina. about how racing technology makes their streetcars better. What they fail to say is whose race technology has won more than anyone else. Chevrolet. The cars more people depend on. Over the years, I've made a lot of trips back and forth to Vegas. So how's it going this trip, George? The odometer was broken for over 50,000 miles. So I say we've got 300,000 miles on this car. Hi, George. I've had a longer relationship with this car than I've had with any woman. Hi, George. How are you? This beauty is a living example of what can be done with proper maintenance and AC Delco. Hi, George. AC Delco parts. It's like buying time. Where to find the mountain man? A mountain man can often be found on the trail of adventure in search of remote watering holes or weathering harsh climates most often however you'll find the mountain man wherever you find smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush light so head for the mountains and find yourself in the wide open world of the mountain man Harry Gant leads the Mountain Dew Southern 500 here at Darlington Behind the wall, still working on the clutch, is Dale Earnhardt. GM Goodwin Chevrolet is trying to be repaired so that he can get back out there in competition. Jimmy Hensley, the Trop Arctic car, is currently running in 23rd position. As Jimmy, as he goes around this 1.3-mile racetrack at Darlington. That's Andy Belmont that he's going by. Morgan Shepard, as he closes in on the back of Bud Strickland, and there we see telemetry in Morgan Shepard's car as he comes off turn four, I guess this is, yes. Pushing the brakes a little bit, 148, 152. This should be the fastest part of the racetrack, 169. And he backs off going into turn number one. Well, we've got horsepower here this afternoon in this race. Coming up, more horsepower. And there's also a $1 million guaranteed purse for this. One of the great turf events in all of horse rating. The Budweiser Racing to the Breeders' Cup. That's from Arlington Heights, Illinois. That will be live right after our live coverage of this NASCAR Winston Cup event. So a million dollars to this race with Davy Allison can win and a million dollars in that event. And hey, there's a, got to be the fastest car in the race. Oh, yeah, Mark Martin is just... Coming up through the field, he's already up to fourth. Michael Walker just made a pit stop in the Pennzoil Pontiac. We'll see other pit stops coming up here very shortly. And let's go to Jerry Punch, who has a report on Mark Martin. Almost unbelievable, Bob. Mark Martin came out after that pit stop, pitting in the back stretch in 29th position. He has moved all the way to fourth, and now has just gone by Ernie Irvin to take the third spot away. You know, yesterday, those who watched the bush race yesterday saw how Mark Martin was so hooked up so well. Jack Rouse told me this morning that they're hooked up equally as quick today. So watch for Martin to be a factor before the afternoon is over as we got one car erupting in a blue smoke here in the front stretch. Looks to be the Wally Dollar 
that car slowing in turn one. Wally takes it down to the apron of the racetrack in turn number one, and uh, he's will have to make his way back here to the front stretch because he uh, is pitted here on the main straightaway. And here's what happened as he came off of turn four. We're thinking lost it up coming off turn four and slapped the wall. Looks like that he might be a little flat on that right side. Or if he's hit the wall, man. We'll be around in a minute. We'll see. Yeah, he'll, he'll bring it on yep. around. He's down on the inside of the racetrack trying to, to get around. He's come, going to go at least a lap down. Now he brings it into the pits. Well, he had a good run going here. He sure did. But unfortunately, he's uh, going to lose a good bit of time now. I think he's got a darling stripe on there. Is that not flattened? Yeah, it sure is. A little paint rubbed off the 16, too. 29 cars are on the lead lap with Harry Gant. And now Harry comes up and will put a lap on Richard Petty, who is running 28th. This is the longest green flag run we have had with that one caution. Richard Petty would like to see another one right now. There's second place, Marlin. And Petty really slows. Ooh, He's going to go into the pits now. Yeah. Once uh, Harry came up and put him a lap down, it's pit stop time. There's uh, going to be a number of Oh, in fact, all of them will be making pit stops, I think, here within the next 10 laps. And here is the battle for fourth place, Irvin and Davy Allison. Now, uh, there's Petty pitted on the back stretch. Wally Dallenbach's service has been completed here on the front stretch. He's back out there on the racetrack. They're making a chassis adjustment on that car. Yeah, they did. We talked about Wally Dallenbach. Here's what happened to him. He comes off turn four. This is from Jimmy Enzo's car. Looking back at him. He comes off the corner, gets the car out of shape, corrects it, Ooh, and goes in, hits the wall, goes down, and does a great job not to go all the way around. Yes, yeah. he does. Good shot there from our bumper cam. Here's fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yep, Brett Bodine is right in there among the mix, and Harry Gant drops down off the 23-degree banking and heads for pit road. This is a regularly scheduled stop for Harry Gant. 55 miles an hour, the speed limit on pit road. This pit stop coming at lap number 92. Jerry Punch will call the pit stop as Harry Gant gives up the lead. And the same Oldsmobile that was so dominant a year ago comes to pit road for his first green flag stop of the day. What should be the first in a series of leaders pit stops. They have changed right side tires, and folks, they are obligated now to change left side tires because they were showing a lot of tire temperature after their first pit stop under the caution. Windshield has been cleaned, no rule. Tight on the run, just get in the way. Now, as Gant leaves, coming down pit road comes the Sterling Marlin car, the Maxwell House Ford Thunderbird, and behind him, Ernie Urban, Davey Allison, and Dale Jarrett. And we said all the leaders will be making their pit stops here because of the concern over possible tire wear. Urban is in, Marlin is in, and the Havilland crew of Davey Allison go to work. We would expect to see four tire changes on all three of those cars. Joey Knuckles changing the right side tires. They're coming around the left side of Davy Allison, Tablet Ford. Left side tires going on. Very deliberate pit work. This crew doesn't know, not want to make a single mistake and lose a chance at that Winston Million. Marlon is out first. Davy is out second. And Ernie Irvin still sits on pit road. Finally, Irvin gets the car fired and very slowly. And they're pushing the car. They are trying to fire the car. Irvin's Ernie Urban's Kodak Chevrolet is not firing. He has trouble, but now he's away. But Mark Martin is pitting in the back stretch in front of John Kernan. Jerry Mark pulls in. It will be a four-tire change. He was going to come in around lap 101. But as you might imagine, with the way the tire's been slowing down, the way this rough old racetrack has been eating them up, monkey see, monkey do. As soon as you see those leaders and those front-running cars come in, you have no choice but to come in yourself and put on four tires. Right sides are already on. They come around to the left side. It's a pretty good-looking pit stop on the way for Mark Martin. He is down and away. 20.3-second pit stop for Mark Martin. Davies was 20 seconds even. Ricky Rudd's tied Chevrolet is on pit road as they work on the left side of that car. Of course, he had taken the lead when those in front of him had hit him. Uh, now he roars out of the pit area. And Bill Elliott, I think, uh, maybe would uh, be the leader, but yep. and he'll get those five bonus points by just simply staying out there. Well, I'm not sure if he stayed out there, if Davey Allison had passed him. So, I don't know, we'll have to check and see if he actually did 
lead the race or what the situation was. He probably did. I think he did lead the yes. race. And Kyle Petty is slowing down in turn two, coming down off the banking, and Kyle will make a pit stop. John Kernan still back there. Well, if, you, if you're pitting on the back stretch, you would much rather see green flag pit stops. You don't lose any, you don't have any disadvantage as you do under caution. The Mellow Yellow crew awaiting Kyle is pulling to his pit stop. It'll be another four tire change. Kyle has moved all the way up to second on the leaderboard just moments ago. Right side going up, the jack going up. They will also make a chassis adjustment in the right rear as the car is just a little bit loose. Right side's already on. They've jacked up the left side. Tire is flying on. There we go with the air wrench, the gun, and now the fuel power gunting goes away. Now to the front stretch where Bill Elliott is pitting and Dr. Jerry Clark. Elliott, a four-time winner here at the famed Darlington Raceway, including 1985. He saw the top of the show when he picked up the first and only Winston Million. Now the Budweiser crew getting set for Bill Elliott's pit stop. We might mention that Ernie Irvin's problems moments ago was a transmission problem. They are trying to decipher what the problem is. As we watch the Budweiser crew now go to work on Elliott's Ford Thunderbird. Elliott hoping to be able to hold on to that Winston Cup point lead. Right side tires going on. Left side lug nuts have been taken off and cleaning the windshield. Daryl Andrews, Tim Brewer, Mike Hill and the crew now putting left side tires on. Junior Johnson now helps with the left front. All lug nuts are tight. 22 seconds even as the car number 11 heads back to turn one. Fellas, let me correct myself. I, I wondered if Bill Elliott had taken the lead. Yes, he had taken the lead, of course, by staying out there. And Davey Allison had passed him when he came back out. Davey had unlapped himself from uh, Bill Elliott at that point. And here's the car number 55, Ted Musgrave, the Jasper Ensign car, who had just taken the lead as a result of staying out there. So he's in for his pit stop. Here's a guy that's staying pit for 1993. Kernan uh, will call this pit stop. Ted Musgrave pulls into his pit. They will go to work. It'll be, as we've said all day long, a four-tire change. It looks like the car might be just overheating just a little bit as we see a little spray coming out from under the hood. They a lot of buildup on the front grill from the rubber and, and stuff that's out there on the racetrack. they got to try and get that cleaned up. And you see that wire, water coming up on the right side next to the uh, windshield. Right sides are already on, left sides are going on. Remember the great run this guy had is Michigan. He hopes to repeat that today. And now here's the way. 27 seconds. That's considerably slower than what we saw from Mark Martin and uh, Davey Allison. About seven seconds slower, as a matter of fact. Gant has the lead once again, as all of those who are running up front have made their regularly scheduled pit stops. Harry Gant now gets the lead back in the Southern 500 after 101 laps. this year's father-son picnic was on Saturday, but they said no, it was definitely on Sunday. And you know, they never listened to me. Here's to wise men, wiser women, and comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. I feel it makes a very big difference to have the right oil in your automobile. You've made an investment in an automobile, so you should use a quality lubricant to protect that. I would recommend Penzoil to anyone. The same quality Penzoil that goes into this race car, you can also use and uh, buy right off the shelf and put in your uh, own automobile to drive on the street. Penzoil is the only product I've ever used. The investment I've made in my automobile uh, is going to be worthwhile because of Penzoil's protection. Penzoil, performance, protection, and quality. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. Welcome back to Darlington, where the race fans are watching the Southern 500. And today's race includes the Gillette Halfway Challenge Contest. $10,000 to the driver leading in the halfway lap, and a lucky fan at home could win a new Chevrolet Luminous Z34. If you enter the contest for this race and your entry is selected, you're called at home. You must name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge to win the car. 
Now, if you want to enter the contest for next week's Miller Genuine Draft 400 at Richmond, that will be on Saturday night, September 12th, right to Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33731 2246. You must be 18 years of age or older to enter. We must receive your entry by Friday night, September the 11th, to be eligible for the next Gillette Halfway Challenge. Bethany has changed. Harry Gant still leading the race. Has himself a fairly comfortable lead over Sterling Marlin, who is running in second place. In fact, it's about three and seventeen seconds. There's Marlin coming off the turn. Yeah, we saw that white car, the hood of that white car just coming to the moment ago. That's Mark Martin, and he is working with himself up to third place. Davey Allison fourth as we show you another Fram Field summary. Dale Jarrett had a great pit stop, Ned, and moved up to fifth. Yeah, 19.9. I clocked him, so the interstate battery's pretty good. Really getting the job done today. Bill Elliott has fallen back to 11th position. 19 cars on the lead lap as Bobby Hillen, who's running in 20th, is a lap down and on back through the field. Ernie Urban came out of the pits. We documented the problems that he had on his pit stop, and he was not far in front of Harry Gant from going to lap down, but he's pulled away from Gant a little bit now, so he's safe by about three or four seconds from going to lap down. Second place, Sterling Marlin. And now showing you the interval between second and third place, Mark Martin. His Winston Cup car looks as well as his uh, Bush car did yesterday, doesn't it? Then? Yes, it does. He, Mark Martin drives this racetrack well and apparently knows how to set a race car up to get around here because his Bush car yesterday was absolutely dominant. He didn't win the race, but he was the fastest car on the track. Here's Baby Allison currently running in fourth position. You can see the clouds overhead of Darlington. It's quite dark in some areas leading to the speculation of the possibility at least of rain before this thing is over. Would there you, you go again, mention that well, word. I know, but it seems like that's something that they would have to consider here. I mean, you, you mentioned to Bill, poor Bill Elliott a minute ago, and he lost three spots. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jinx, right? Yeah, Mr. Jinx. <laughs> and there's Dale Jett, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. He's currently fifth. And then a battle for six back behind him as we see Jarrett coming back up on Richard Petty. Now, Richard made that pit stop. We saw him a little bit ago. He came out and blew Dale Jarrett off. Went on for a little bit, but now Jarrett's uh, come back up on him once his newness gets off those tires. And there is Rudd and Brett Bodine who are battling for that position. As a matter of fact, uh, Rudd just took the position away from Brett Bodine just a lap ago. At 67, we're seeing on the screen. Ricky Rudd in sixth, Brett Bodine seventh. Now, you wonder why the Bill Elliott, Darrell Walter, some of these guys that get so good fuel mileage, why they didn't stay on the racetrack. The tire, the speed drops off so quickly that Harry Gant, went, the leader, went in the pits. In 10 laps, he could almost put a half a lap on these guys if they stayed out on those old tires. So as soon as that leader goes in and gets fresh tires, in self-defense, they've got to do the same thing. Eighth and ninth right here, Ken Schrader and Rusty Wallace. Here's John Kernan. Well, you know, it has not been exactly the greatest of years for Rusty Wallace. And today, crew chief Buddy Parrott hopes that he's come up with the right combination. He said that they think they've got some the car set up where Rusty will like it. As the race goes on, they think the track's going to come to them. But more importantly, Buddy told me that they're running a little more gear than everybody else. He says, hey, we're not out here running for points today. We're running for the win. If we don't get it, we're going to be very, very disappointed drivers who won a race last year but has not won a race this year. In fact, both of these guys, Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader, are on the no-win list for 1992. And Schrader back in got a little bit loose as he came off that second corner. Kicked out a little bit coming off the turn. On the Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet. Kodiak, the sponsor. He's closing in now here on this straightaway. Well, Rusty really got off that fourth corner well, didn't he? Yep. 
And look who's coming back out. This is the roof cam on the GM Goodwin Chevrolet driven by Dale Earnhardt. He was in the clutch for many, many laps with clutch problems. And here is Wallace and Schrader. And now Wallace will take the position. And look at this, Dave Marcus in the Kellogg's car. Just comes up and blows Schrader off as well. Dave Marcus having a good run here. Is he a lap down? Yes, he is. Okay. Yeah, he's a lap down to these cars, so that's not the position. And a disappointing debut with the Hedrick team last year when he crashed, but he's doing well today. Now, Harry Gant comes up and is about to put a lap on Morgan Shepard, who is being shown in the 19th position. That would leave 18 cars on the lead lap. Every time Harry can lap the car, that helps Mark Martin. We talk about Mark putting it on the back. There we go. Quickie going by Terry Labonte, taking that spot away. What's that for, 11th? Yep. Oh, you've got Earnhardt with those fresh tires. See, I was talking about how much faster the cars are with fresh tires. Watch Earnhardt. He blows by those cars. He sure did. Their doors are gone. Thank you, Dale. You can show me. You told these people exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> they sent pictures worth a thousand words. I agree with that. That was it. Schrader now, pro or rather, Gant, uh, approaching a whole bunch of traffic. Morgan Shepard and Jeff Bodine and uh, Hud Strickland. Yep, they're all fighting to stay on the lead lap. There are the three cars. As Hutt moves to the inside, let's go down and go by on the outside. A trio of Fords trying to hold off that Osmobile. Harry Gant, though, showing patience. He's not going to take any chances to lap them. Yes, he wants to lap them, but he doesn't want to take any chances of getting fouled up by doing Crowd still on its feet, and they haven't sat down yet. They're all wanting to help Davey spend that million dollars. <laughs> By the way, Davey Allison, who is going for the Winston Million today, is running in fourth position to Gant, Marlin, and Martin. We'll be right back. Coming Sunday, September 13th, to the QVC Shopping Channel, it's the All Day Gem Day. 24 non-stop hours of unforgettable jewelry shopping. It's 1992's biggest selection of gemstone jewelry, with each hour featuring a different glittering gemstone, plus a three-hour grand finale. Shop for your favorites. Try something new. Tune into Gem Day all day Sunday, September 13th on QVC. Stonebridge is a new championship golf course and residential community of scenic beauty three miles south of the Michigan football stadium next to Ann Arbor. Experience country living among meandering streams, ponds, and gently rolling hills. Stonebridge has detached condominium villas on the golf fairways and home sites that are half an acre with underground utilities, sewer, water, and paved roads. We have 10 builders ready to customize a home to your desires. Experience Stonebridge. Shape up with ESPN's Midday Workout. First at 11, Body by Jake gets your engine started with a workout and great health and fitness information. Keep on going at 11.30 with a well-rounded routine on getting fit with Denise Austin. You'll keep on moving at noon with aerobic exercise on bodies in motion. And then at 12.30, body shaping helps you tone up and slim down. It's better to look good and feel good on ESPN's Midday Workout. Yesterday's Bush Grand National Race here at Darlington, you saw live yesterday, won by Michael Walter, was run at record pace, and we're on record pace here in the Winston Cup event by some three miles an hour. Gand is having some difficulty passing these cars, putting a lap on them, and there is Sterling Marlin in second position, and now Mark Martin begins to close in on Sterling. He has caught him. Sterling had a pretty good margin over there for a while. And a big game Martin. auto parts on track interval. Look at this. Uh, laps 107 through 11. And you can see that Mark Martin is indeed, generally speaking, faster. About two tenths of a second. About two tenths of a second. He gained eight tenths of a second in those five laps. But all in all, I'd say he's about two tenths of a second faster than Harry Ginn. And Ginn has problems now, as Ned said, trying to get by those slower cars. And look how Mark Martin closes up on on Sterling Marlin. This is the battle for second position. Mark Martin to the inside of Sterling in turn two. Marlin goes up to 25 degrees of banking and Martin
Mark Martin comes out of the corner with the position, getting a little loose coming out. Yes, he wiggled it back in just a little bit on the foul going forward, but he loses play. Now Mark Martin, who started um, way back in 25th position, is up to second. What a demonstration he's putting on today. Now Harry Gant, we said he was having a little trouble passing those cards. He has put Hut Strickland a lap down. You can see the 12th card. He moved around Wally Dollaback. Who's back out there? We saw him having some problems a little bit earlier. Wally is back out there. There's Morgan Shepard now. Gant is moving up on him. I wonder if he heard us saying well, he's having problems. He said, well, I'll show you guys. I'm going up there and pass him. Well, don't know. He, he just quickly moved around Hut Strickland and was pulled away from him. But Morgan Shepard and Jeff Ludine still out there in front of him. Morgan is 18. So the pace of the Mountain Dew Southern 500 is a quick one. Over the track record right now, but things have settled down fairly quietly here as Harry Gant continues to hold on to this lead so we'll take a break and be back with more from Darlington South Carolina around 1900 GMC truck built America's first gasoline powered truck and went on to make trucks our only business a heritage of trucks that some say worked a little harder lasted a little longer and that's still true today in a truck that gives you the most standard payload and the strongest resale of any full-size pickup. Sierra, from GMC Truck. More proof of the strength of experience. Mark and my relationship goes way past business. Um, I'm sure in a previous life, he and I were twin brothers. Throughout the race, the driver and crew chief communicate. The driver complains about the car or brags about the car. It's the crew chief's job on pit stops to make whatever fixes he can to help the driver's predicament. Everyone has about the same access to equipment and technology, but the people who rub on it the most and think the most of it and think about it the most will end up winning the race. Wow! I feel good! When 280 seemed out of reach, it's Joe Amato and Autolite who punch it. I feel good! Goes to 290. Connie Coletta and Autolite smash it. 300. The barrier. Kenny Bernstein and Autolite shatter it. Autolite and the record breakers. We feel pretty good about that. It's a Labor Day triple header. The Pirates face the Cubs. The Athletics battle the Angels. And Jose Canseco has waved goodbye to the A's as the Rangers meet the Red Sox. A Labor Day triple header, live on ESPN. A Labor Day weekend tradition since 1950. This is the 43rd annual Southern 500, sponsored by Mountain Dew from Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. And we're glad you could join us live for our Speed World coverage, being brought to you by GMC Truck, the strength of experience. By Valvoline, people who know use Valvoline. And by Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. Harry Gant is leading the Southern 500 as we watch from inside of Morgan Shepard's car. You can see the clouds overhead, and a few laps ago, you guys laughed at me when I talked about the strategy that may be employed here because of the possibility of rain. But, uh, Doc, uh, there's one team that's thinking about that, huh? You're exactly right, Bob. In fact, Harry Gant doesn't say much on the radio, but let me show you what his crew chief, Andy Petrie, just wrote down in front of him on his notepad. Right here, it says, we now have... To race rain and believe me they are watching the clouds and watching the front move in as Harry Gant continues to lead here they know what it takes to win you know not only have to be good you have to be lucky and they're watching the skies guys now the clouds are moving in and the temperature is dropping so there is a front approaching he's also watching Mark Martin <laughs> Harry Gant is in his rearview mirror because Martin has caught it you guys quit talking about the rain <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something you have to think about Benny Mark Martin started 25th, was up to 9th by the 30th lap, continued to move up until he received the second place.
at the end of 131 laps, and now he's within three or four car lanes. Here's John Curtis. Don't be surprised if you see Mark turn up the heat quite a bit. Steve Neal radioed in and said, hey, we're looking at rain in a short while. Why don't you try and take that car to the front? And he's closing in on Harry again. He's been closing in the last few laps. In terms of a complete race, it would be considered a full race if we passed one lap over the halfway point, which would mean we'd have to go 185 laps. And we're on lap 132 as Steve Meal from the Mark Martin crew watches his driver now really put the heat on Harry Gant and make a bit for the move down the back stretch. He's the lead. Mark Martin is the leader of the Southern 500. Yeah, Harry just backed off of Edco once he got up the side of it there. Now, Mark wants those five bonus points too because he's sitting up there where? In fifth place in the point standings? Uh -huh. Yeah, that five points might mean a lot. So he gets them. Yes, he does. There's Peggy Gant. Harry's wife saying, well, he doesn't have the lead right now, but the race isn't over yet. She realized these 500-mile races are a long, long ways. There's the leader, Mark Martin. Harry Gantt's second. Sterling Marlin is third, and, uh, well, anyway, here, what would you show you how there they go? There you go. Yep. Another Fram Field summary. Here's uh, Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott, ninth and tenth, as you can see. Elliott pulling alongside. We're going to turn three. Kyle Pitty right behind him. Elliott sliding into ninth position, and John Curtin has another report on Rusty Wallace's car. Well, Rusty Wallace, I told you about how they were running just a little bit more gear than everyone. They also thought the tires would be a very important part of today's race, as we have seen. So how many sets did they have? They started the weekend with 15. They used three in practice. They had 12 brand new sets of tires to use for this race. And that was among the top teams, guys. But hey, with the way these clouds are rolling in here, I don't know if they're going to get a chance to use all 12 sets. At uh, how much per set? $1,000 hey. per <laughs> set. Wow. Kyle Petty takes the spot away from Rusty Wallace. And he also has 12 sets of new tires ready to go on and any other team that you want to show a car going around the racetrack so it takes a lot of tires a lot of money to run a race here at Darlington. Kyle Petty another car that's hitting on the back straightaway as I said I think I've said earlier he qualified 30th for the Southern 500. And his dad started 31st, and now Kyle is in 10th, and his dad, Richard, is in 27th. Mark, Mark Martin. Martin, yep, he's the leader, Valvoline Ford. Look, he's already pulled out to about a second advantage over Harry Gant, and where is third? Way back there is uh, Sterling Marlin, right? He just went, went by a picture. There's a fourth-place guard, Davey, and a crash down at turn one. It's like Chad Little has hit the wall along Jim with Bodine. Jeff Bodine. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Bodine is involved right in front of the leader, Mark Martin. Martin got slowed down. And Jeff. Morgan Shepard is going to try to get a lap back. But we'll watch that as Mark, Martin has slowed. And Morgan Shepard really coming up on him right now. Here's He's trying Morgan. to get a lap back. He goes high into the turn, and Mark Martin's going to let him. Yep. Well, the Wood Brothers and Jack Roush work very closely together on a lot of things. They're good friends, and that could be a little friendship being uh, paid off. Here. A little forward strategy, too, yep. perhaps. Yep. Yep. That could be worth a lot of money to Morgan Shepard. Yep, sure could be. All right, the, the car that hit the wall the hardest is at the bottom of the racetrack between turns one and two. Jeff Bodine continued on. There is Chad Little in the Melling car. And here is a replay. Our cameras were following it. That's Terry Labonte. A uh, little contact between the two, and Chad drives it up the hill and boom, into the wall. He locked the brakes. You can see the marks, and there Jeff Bodine just clipped him in the motorcraft forward and couldn't get it back under control. So he slides it around. Don't think there's too much damage to Jeff Bodine's car, but you can see a lot of damage to the car number nine of Chad Little. Safety crew is right there as the field is now behind the pace car. We're going to see what a disadvantage it is for a leader, Mark Martin. He could not come in the pits because he's pitting on the back. Here comes all the guys on the lead lap. Look at them. All these fellows will start in front of Mark Martin when they restart. Gant, 
Marlon, Allison, Jarrett, Rudd, Brent Bodine. Look on the right side <laughs> of the screen. Nobody there. Come on, Mark, where are you? I'm following the pace car, guys. I'll be there in a while. Jarrett Funch, to you. And they've already changed right side tires on most of the guys on the front stretch. Now left side tires going on to Harry Ginn's car. As of just now, beginning to enter the back pits over there. Harry Ginn's crew has already completed his service, and the Skull Hillsmobile is down and headed back to turn one. As Mark Martin makes his way to the pits, let's go to John Kernan. John? Jerry, he is still making his way to the pits. Mark will come in, and here's something that's just a little bit odd. Not only is he coming in for tires, Mark has his helmet off. He wants a new helmet with a new shield on it, so they're going to have to get him a helmet and hand it over to him just as soon as they have a, a they will have to take it along to the right side, hand a new helmet in to Mark. He will put that on, so this is something that I don't think I've ever seen, a four-tire change plus a hat, a new hat for the driver. But, uh, you know, a lot of the guys on the front stretch pitch have already gotten their service and heading back out. Mark is coming out as I see uh, Bill Elliott and Ken Schrader have already made their way. And here comes Darrell Walker. So Mark losing a lot of valuable, valuable uh, spaces down here on pit road. Now the back pits become empty once again. And those that weren't on the lead lap that are pitted here on the front stretch come in for their work. Dale Jarrett doing well here. He's the leader of the Southern 500. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. Darrell Waltrip needs a part, he needs the right part, and he needs it fast. And when you need parts, see the parts team at Western Auto. We've got top name brands and thousands of parts in stock. Right, guys? Right, right DW. DW. And we've got the right price, backed by our low price guarantee. Right? Right, DW. And while you're at Western Auto, pick up Valvoline Motor Oil at a low Western Auto price. People who know, use Valvoline. Western Auto, the official auto parts and service store of NASCAR. Right, guys? Right, right DW. DW. Things are different. The new Pontiac Grand Am Sports Sedan proves it. Things are better because this Grand Am offers you the power and performance of a big V6. You'd pay thousands more for a V6 on a Camry, and it's not even an option on an Accord. In fact, Consumer's Digest named Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac Grand Am, a new kind of driving excitement. This is where America gets together. Every weekend throughout America, there is great NASCAR racing. I wouldn't be anywhere else. to Darlington, South Carolina, telling you a few moments ago about Mark Martin changing helmets. Well, this is why. This is his old helmet. See the difference? He had a very thick smoke shield on the face shield. Now with the clear helmet, you can see quite the difference. And with all the cloud cover moving in, Mark needed to see the racetrack. Guys? Looking at you, John. I'd rather see you through this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. The green flag is out, and we are back to racing after our second caution flag. Dale Jarrett is the leader of the race. That crew is doing magnificent work. He was in and out that last time a little over 18 seconds. Bobby Hillen gets back to one of his laps. I don't know how many Bobby was down, but uh, he moved around Jarrett going into the turn. Now Harry Gant coming up on Jarrett. Also Jarrett Cope, the pure leader shuttle has gotten by Dale Jarrett. Both of those were only one lap down, so they're now back on the tail end of the lead lap. Mark Skies. I'm not sure if that was a NASCAR official down there sticking his elbow over the race. Yeah, I was always wondered about that too. I wouldn't want to be down there. Me either. Gant is second, Davey Allison third. Jerry Punch has a report on pit road of some more tire wear. 
Well, these tires are worn completely out, but it's no, no fault on the Goodyear tire. This is what's left of the right side tires from Jeff Bodine's Motocraft Ford that was spun and was involved in an incident. The tire is completely ripped apart, but the inner liner held up on both these tires. That's what enabled Bodine to make it back to pit road for a scheduled pit stop under the caution. Back upstairs. I think that's what you call flat spotting. That is definitely a flat spot. <laughs> there we see David Jarrett trying to go by. Jerry Cope trying desperately to keep in the, in the lead lap. Goes down to the inside. Here's Davey Allison trying to win that million bucks. And that was close. Yep, sure was. Here comes Harry again, trying to look on the inside of Jared. Down into turn one. No. Oh, Ooh, Harry. <laughs> Davey and Harry very close together. So Dale's car, Dale Jarrett's car pushing just a little bit in the center of that corner, but then he gets the bite and really comes off the corner and hits down the back stretch. And here's Davey Allison trying to take over second. From Harry Dent. Davey gets second. And here comes Ricky Rudd. Harry Gantz lost his momentum. Is Rudd going to try to make a pass as well? Davey comes off that corner. That's Andy Belmont. He closes up on him. We got less than 40 laps to the halfway point. Some big, dark clouds are ominous. Look at Gant. Here is Gant again, going into second place. And now look at Rudd. Yeah, Dallas has lost his momentum. Is Rudd going to try to get by him? Bill Elliott is also right there. That's the best place to Elliott right today. Yep. Rusty Wallace will come and join the group now. Meanwhile, Mark Mark went back to about 10th spot on that caution flag. He went in the pits on the back pit and came out in about 10th, and he's currently is running 8th, so he's closed up in that position. Fifth and sixth again, right there. There's a the race for lead. Gantz moved in on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett. Been taking too long to catch him once he got back around. Baby Allison. Dave Ooh. Marcus makes it three abreast down the back stretch. Look at this. Ooh. Oh, he's in trouble with Hut Strickland. Oh. Boy, Hut got out of it just in time. That could have been deep trouble there. Mark Martin backed off going into the turn. He didn't want to go in there three abreast. Dave Marcus is feeling racy in that Kellogg's car, number 41. This is the one that breaks back for a hurry. If you look at the stripe on the side of that, and there's an even bigger stripe on the opposite side of Hut Strickland's car. Here is first and second. Jarrett with just a couple of car lengths advantage now on Harry Gant. And it now Here comes Harry. Closes to zero, and as a matter of fact, Gant has the lead coming out in the fourth corner. What the hash car is working. That chassis is working so well this afternoon. And it's particularly fast on new tires. I've, I've noticed that uh, Davey Allison's car also works very good on new tires. And when they ran the long run, I was putting the clock on them, and Jared, in relation to when Harry was leading the race, after they ran about 15 or 20 laps, where Jared could stay at about the same distance. But with the new tires, he couldn't stay there quite as well. Here's Mark Mark trying to move on the inside of Dave Marcus, but he backs off a little bit. Then Marcus is in the room, so he comes on up there again. Close racing. It is close racing. Now, Hutch Trickles going to on the inside of Dave Marcus. Well, Marcus, he wants to come on the inside of Mark Mark. <laughs> Side of that 12 car, isn't it? Now, Betty, the Mellow Yellow Pontiac, goes in on the back bumper of Dick Crickle. And Davey Allison now is right on the rear spoiler of Dale Jarrett. Second, third, and fourth here. Rudd hanging in there in fourth. Here, well, Harry again has gotten by Jerry Cole, put him a lap down. And moving up on Bobby Hillett. Bobby Hill and running uh, the 800 number, the Red Cross Disaster Relief Hurricane from Hurricane Andrew here this afternoon. Martin Burain, the team, they don't have a major sponsor on that car, so they're running the 1-800-842-2200 number. Relief for the victims of Hurricane Andrew in uh, Southern Florida. Louisiana, Louisiana. Yeah. There's 
Kyle Petty. Goes down in turn four, turn one, running 10th. There's Trick, Alan Kowicki. Trick, this car looks pretty good coming off the corner, close up on the back bumper. And there's the winner last week, Darrell Walker behind Kyle Petty. Watch the line that Kyle uh, will use in the third and fourth corner. He has been running lower than most everyone else. There he comes. Look how low he gets. He gets the left wheels all the way down below the flat line. He's on the works for him. Yeah. He did that in the spring. Remember, he got he got all four tires out on the flat. I thought he'd crash. And it, that was his groove. The line. Harry Gant now on the inside of Bobby Hillen going into turn three. Where he was, but he's not going to be able to make the pass if you watch Kyle Petty and Dick Trickle. As we watch all this, Sterling Marlin, guys down the pits, uh, something he had a long, long pit stop the last time. I don't know why, but he's way back in the pack. Marlin, the pole sitter, is back in 13th position. And now Harry Gant pulls up to put a lap on Bobby Hillen in the Southern 500 from Darlington International Raceway back in a moment. of a Chevrolet is determined by many factors. We consider volumetric efficiency, coefficient of drag, yaw damping, polar moments of inertia, induction velocity, camber, caster, bounce, rebound, thermodynamic load, slip angles, linkage arrangements. And at Chevrolet, we also take into account the yeehaw factor. The cars more people depend on. Professional service, a friendly face. That's your Big A Pro. Big A, the side that keeps your car running right. ESPN Home Video presents Practical Jokes on the Pros, a home video featuring baseball, basketball, and football stars that you'll watch over and over and over. And over, and over, and over again. Oh, yeah? The hilarious practical jokes on the pros. We're getting closer to the halfway mark. If you've entered the Gillette Halfway Challenge and are called at home and can name the driver who will win the Gillette Halfway Challenge Award, you will win a new Chevrolet Lumina. If you want to enter the contest for next week's Miller Genuine Draft 400 at Richmond, that is on Saturday night, the 12th, right to Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 337-31-2246. You must be 18 years of age or older to enter, and we must receive your entry by Friday, September the 11th, to be eligible for next week's Gillette Halfway Challenge. And Ricky Rudd takes the third spot away from Davey Allison and Bill Elliott. Davey's worst nightmare is right behind him. He thought he was going to gain some points because Elliott had trouble early. It looks like Tim Brewer, those guys have adjusted the car, and here Brewer, I mean, here Elliott is right back in the race. And you've got to take your head off to Rusty Wallace, who's at the back of that pack, but now here's Davey making a bid for the position again in turn one and taking it from Ricky. Meanwhile, Harry Hand is just driven on away from him. Third, fourth, fifth. Baby Austin going awfully high. His line is very, very high down in three and four. And we can see he's losing a little momentum down in that corner by that extremely high line he's taking. Two cautions so far today, still on record pace. The record is 135.4, and the average speed of this event so far is 136.4. Just a little over 20 laps to the halfway point. Watch out high that Davy Allison is. See how much lower these other cars are than Davy Allison? Certainly a dramatically different line from the one we saw Kyle cut a while ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, Kyle and Davy could run through there wide open, and their crews have never touched. 
talked just a moment ago about Sterling Marlin, the 22 car. He was in this race up front. Jerry Punch, what in the world happened to Sterling? Benny, Mike Beam told me they had a lug nut hang up in the socket when they were changing the front tire, and that caused them a lengthy delay in the pits. That's not bad. It just cost them some time on pit road. However, the news for Ernie Irvin isn't quite so good. A moment ago, NASCAR came over to talk to the Kodak crew, and we've noticed a little smoke out of the back of the four car. And they said, remember, we had that problem leaving the pit road earlier with the transmission. We think we have a crack in the transmission. In fact, they've even pulled jack stands and a new transmission behind the wall, getting them ready to bring Ernie in if it should give up and change the transmission. So they're holding their breath and have their fingers crossed right now in the Kodak pits. Sterling 12th and Irvin is 13th. We'll watch for that for you Wally Dollenbach fans. His car is on pit road being worked on. Here's Gant still leading. He has about a two and three tenths second lead over Dale Jerry. Racetrack in front of him and Dale Jarrett awfully close to that outside retaining wall. Sure was. And Belmont on the apron of the racetrack as Jarrett goes by the Interstate Chevrolet. Dale Jarrett's best finish here at Darlington was back in 1988 when he finished 12th in the spring race. There's Davey Allison working through slower traffic. That's uh Derek Cope being lapped. Also putting a lap on Derek is Ricky Rudd. See what these cars off the close. Yeah, other than that group, Schrader, Rusty Wallace. On the tail end of this pack. There's Mark Martin. Mark Martin. Boy, he just keeps catching him. He keeps <laughs> Getting back in those pit stops because of beating on the back stretch, but he keeps coming back. Mark is another driver who has never won the Southern 500 here at Darlington. As a matter of fact, has never won either race at this old facility, but his best finish in this event was in 1989 when he was runner up. He and Rusty Wallace running about the same tracks coming off the corner, so difficult to pass. Gary Cope making room for uh, Bill Elliott and Schrader. About 15 laps now from the halfway point. Ooh, Elliott high off the corner. Trying now Schrader is going to pass him. That's right. Elliott is trying to go by Gary Cope, which also spot up for Schrader. Here comes Rusty Wallace down on the inside. He saw a little bit of an opening. Ooh, Ooh. he and Elliot's going to get together. Ooh, second Elliot, time. Elliot just backed out right there. That looked like what happened to Gant in yesterday's Grand National race. He just took a high line coming off the corner. He admitted there wasn't any contact between the two cars. He just got up in the loose and banged the wall pretty hard. As these guys touched Wallace and Elliot yep. coming off four not once but twice at least two love taps <laughs> as he entered, actually turned four and Elliot just backed off the throttle there a little bit gave up the position to retain his race car <laughs> Mark is trying to get on the inside of Rusty Wallace trying trying can't get alongside and he and Rusty as I said before are running the same groove basically Every time that Martin's car, he goes to the bottom of the racetrack, there's Rusty. Now he's going to try it down the straightaway. It looks like that extra gear that Rusty Wallace has in his car that John Kerner talked about is able to propel him down the straightaway quick enough to stay in front of Mark Martin. Meanwhile, he goes by Derry Cope. And Elliott closes in on Martin. Separation between those guys and the 33 car. And the 33 car is driven by Harry Gant, who, after 170 of 367 laps in the Mountain Dew Southern 500, is the leader.
independent carpet and floor covering stands for the freedom to choose. From the hundreds of styles and textures in stock, along with area rugs, oriental rugs, vinyl flooring, and hardwood floors. Independent stands for freedom from worry. We carry all the new stain-resistant fibers, including Anso 5 worry-free carpets from Ally. Independent stands for you. Come in and browse our beautiful new store. We're ready for immediate delivery and professional installation of your new floor. Independent carpet and floor covering on Wayne Road, south of Ford Road. Remember the big eye. Your excitement, X marks the spot. It's Wolverine, Colossus, Dazzler, Nightcrawler, Storm. It's the most popular team in superhero history. Every month in Marvel Comics. Look for Marvel Comics where X marks the spot. Whether it's clothing, sports cards, or comics, Play Ball has it all. On Warren, across the street from Westland Mall. Coming up this afternoon on ESPN, you'll see a horse race like you've never seen one before. ESPN's Jockey Camp makes its debut at the Arlington Million. It's Budweiser racing to the Breeders' Cup, live from Arlington Heights, Illinois, at 5 Eastern on ESPN. That is going to be great later today. ESPN's Jockey Cam making its debut at the Arlington Million. It's the Budweiser racing to the Breeders' Cup live from Arlington Heights, Illinois. And that'll be right after our live race. The Jockey Cam, uh, rather, rather, right after this race from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Million dollars up for grabs in that one, too, as there is here at Darlington International Raceway. Now... Hey, they have got, they've got nothing on the jockey cam. We've got a jockey cam, too, on the roof of Morgan Shepard's Sitco Ford. And we've also got the telemetry for you. We can tell how fast this horse is running. <laughs> Let's see how fast. 154, 57, 60, 8, 70, 171 miles an hour. Down to 118. Looked like was his bottom speed before he began to pick it back up. That was in turns one and two. There he is now, heading into turn three. Gordon Shepard in the set go forward. A few tire marks on the side of that car. He's 15th. Remember, he was a lap down. And uh, mm -hmm. in that last caution flag, Mark Martin, the leader, yep. slowed for the caution, and uh, Morgan Shepard had to get that lap back. Mm -hmm. Go. We were talking about Sterling Marlin and Ernie Irvin, who have both had their mechanical problems here. Well, they're running together out there, and they're, well, they're mixing it up a little bit. There's Sterling Marlin bumping his way around Dick Bristol. Oh, my oh, goodness, wow, that was he? really close. <laughs> that looked like Bristol up there last Saturday night when <laughs> Sterling went down the corner and got it sideways. Sterling is 11th, and Ernie is 12th. And that would put Dick Trickle then in 13th position, the number eight car. They're all on the lead lap. Uh -huh. Back there still, what, back 17? There are, uh, yep, 17 cars on the lead lap. Still at record pace. Almost two miles an hour over the record average. Phillips goes blowing by Dave Marcus at Kellogg's Corn Flakes car. Closes in right on the back bumper of Alan Kowicki. That's Kowicki, the orange and white number seven. He tries to get on the inside of Bobby Hill, and he does that. We are less than six laps away from the halfway point. Sterling Marlin on the inside of Bobby Hill. Yet next moment, though, there's an 800 number on the quarter panel of Hillen's car for the Hurricane Relief. That's 800 842 2200 if you want to. Help some of the victim of victims of Hurricane Andrew in and Hillen. Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, he needs some relief there for a moment. <laughs> well, I think all of us uh, are very hopeful that uh, everything can get back to normal in southern Florida before too long after that devastating hurricane went through there. And I'm sure there are a lot of race fans that probably aren't able to watch and keep up with the activity because of loss of power, but we're thinking about you and uh, loss of power, loss of television. Yeah. yeah. Well, Harry Gant has.
Davies has himself a nice lead over Dale Jarrett. Davey Allison now beginning to close in a little bit on Jarrett. With Jimmy Means going by, just ahead of Harry Gant. Means is running sponsorless, but by golly, he's out there. That stands for. But, uh, I saw that on the entry disc. And Sterling yes. and Urban are still running together. Still having a good race. <laughs> Sterling Mullen was a post center. John Kernan said in his stand up, how much is a good account challenge? 53,200. If he can win the race. Wow. And you know, Bill Elliott, we talked about Davy Allison, how he can win a million dollars bonus if he wins this race. Bill Elliott will exceed. Oh, oh Sterling and Marlin Sterling gets in the wall. Hits the wall. Marlin banged against the wall and keeps it going. Caution? Not, not yet. yet. No, not yet. The officials looked down at it, but they didn't see anything. Ooh, and now he, there might be one. Yeah. There will be. Well, Who did he take with him? Yeah, Morgan Shepard. Morgan out. Shepard, yeah. yeah. Looks like Morgan got the worst end of the deal, too. Yeah, I think he, he sure did. did. Yeah, you can see the hood crumple up on the yep. Sitco Ford. There's the roof cam. It's still working, but the Sitco Ford is stopped for the moment on top of the banking in turn one. Now, here's what happened down in the one and two area as this car just corner, took off. Just going straight it's like the right front tire is low on air or or he got in the corner too hard but uh you would lead you would think that the the right front was low on air now he goes in the third corner and again yeah the right front tire just doesn't have any air in it mm. lake speed slows yeah. down morgan gets in there behind him and clips yeah. sterling going in it turns him right into the wall Coming up to the uh, halfway lap, but it will not count because we have to be under green. Elmo and, Langley can't get it, huh? <laughs> in fact, Elmo is leading this race right now, so the halfway challenge will be delayed for a moment. Well, a lot of pit stops are now going to be made under this third caution flag of the afternoon. Here comes Gant, Jarrett, Allison, and others. Here's Jerry Punch. And Harry Gant's crew very well aware that the halfway money of $10,000 will come into play on the fifth consecutive green flag lap after the green comes back out. 28 on the bottom of your screen. That's Davey Allison's crew working on his fourth Thunderbird. Top of your screen, you're watching the Skull crew now changing left side tires on Harry Gant's machine. Now Allison's crew, the left side of their Haviland Ford, left side tires are already on the Gant's car. <laughs> Pit Road looks like it'll be Gant, Dale Jarrett, then Davey Allison, Rusty Wallace, and Ricky Rudd. They head back to turn one. We are waiting for Mark Martin to arrive at his pit. There he is on the back stretch, John. I tell you what, I thought I was waiting for Christmas to come. It took so long for Mark to get around here to the back stretch. It will be a four tire change. Mark had just radioed in and it told the crew the car was just a little bit tight. He didn't quite like that set of tires. So he wasn't able to make a run toward the front. So they took around the wedge out on the right rear. They will put on four tires, make sure that they get the grill clean. Mark is down and way up down pit road with Kyle Petty right behind him. We are under caution because of an incident involving Sterling Marlin, which ultimately involved Morgan Shepard. And Harry Gant is coming back into, no, yeah, he is. Yeah. Gant is back into the pits for a second stop. <laughs> Jerry, what's the deal here? Apparently, they are pounding their fist here in the Gantt pit, and they did not get the lug nuts tight on the left front wheel. So Gantt comes back in, and there's at least two lug nuts. Let me look. Now, three lug nuts they have to tighten, and Gantt now is away. So that 20-second pit stop looks to be the best of the, the caution flag, but it's a costly pit stop as Gantt has to come back in and tighten the left front lugs. How about costly, Jerry? Could have been $10,000. That's right. right. The track position. Yep. And there is Morgan Shepard as we have a live shot of him. That car back behind the wall. It has received extensive damage from that incident up in turn three. Here it is from the roof camp. Watch and listen.
things happen. can happen so quickly. Can't happen they? so fast. Mm. Nothing you could do. Morgan Shepard begins to unbuckle and climb out of the Citgo Ford after a good run that may be over. Back in a moment. Alistair Jr. has the lead. One more turn to go. Here they come. The checkered flag is out. Little Al wins by just a few tenths of a second. Perhaps the closest finish in the history of the Indianapolis 500. Freedom. It's the spirit which moves the Cutlass Supreme, a car intelligently engineered to free your eyes, your hands, your senses. Introducing the new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. The look may change, but the spirit remains the same. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. My new Wagner Power Painter. Can you edge with it? Yeah, like this. In fact, it'll take care of just about any project you've been meaning to do. Why am I painting this by hand? Get a Wagner. Back at Darlington, Richard Petty running 24th in his final Southern 500. He is a three-time winner here at this facility in 33 starts. He's won the Southern 500 once. Won three times, but our petty memory recalls a race that he did not win. Here's Jerry Punch. This Richard Petty memory is brought to you by the First Brands Corporation, makers of STP oil treatment. Those are the kind of things you don't forget. It was a classic race. Two more turns to go. Richard Petty still side by side. Sonny Ellison is still hanging in his third. Oh! Petty has got the lead, but there comes Walker. Down below him as Petty split up high. Sonny Ellison trying to move past Petty into second place. They're coming to the finish line. It is Darrell Waltrip winning the Rebel 500. We passed each other four times, four or five times, in the last lap of the race. I carried Richard down there, and when we got to the corner, Richard was going so fast, he was on the inside. He had to go up. I jammed the brakes and cut under him. I didn't know Donnie Allison was right behind me. I about took Donnie's nose off when I did that, but I cut under Richard, and we go through three and four side by side. We come off of four, coming down to get the flag, and I guess I beat him by about a, maybe a car length. It was an exciting race. I'll never forget it. Quality motor oil can go a long way toward protecting against engine wear. But by adding STP oil treatment, it can go even further because STP increases even the best oil's viscosity by up to 50%. It's that simple. See the king as you've never seen him before in Richard Petty, the legend. This official two-volume home video of Richard Petty's incredible racing career includes every fantastic finish and dramatic crash. Along with your video, you'll get this limited edition collector car. Order now and receive a Richard Petty commemorative poster. Call 1-800-547-4343 or send $38.95 plus $5 shipping and handling to Richard Petty, the legend, 805B Franklin Court, Marietta, Georgia, 30067. We are still under caution here at Darlington because of a crash involving Sterling Marlin and Morgan Shepard. Dale Jarrett is the leader at the 188 lap mark. We'll take another break and be back with more of our live action in just a moment. You've seen it before. The ones who run with the herd and the one who always seems to run alone. developed on the track for the awesome 650 horsepower Lumina NASCAR champion. Go 
goes into cars like this. The 1992 twin dual cam V6 Chevy Lumina Z34. Sorry, decals not included. Chevy Lumina Z34, from the heartbeat of America. And now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. Demonstrate the incredibly realistic color of Kodak Gold Plus film. Just open the box. No other print film captures a wider spectrum of colors at any speed. Kodak Gold Plus film. True colors. More colors. The Winston Million is on the line here this afternoon in the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington International Raceway. We are still under caution cleaning up the accident involving Sterling Marlin and Morgan Shepard. Davey right now is second to the leader, Dale Jarrett. We'll be right back. Things are different. The new Pontiac Grand Am GT proves it. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not Accord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumer's Digest named Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac Grand Am, a new kind of driving excitement. Hey, Mark, what's it like? What? driving one of those souped-up family cars. I don't think you can handle it, Al. Sometimes we bump into each other. Yeah, but it's always in slow motion. <laughs> Are you going to take that from a guy who can't do anything for more than five seconds at a time? Turn and face your accuser, Joe. I don't have to turn, man. I'm a drag racer. <laughs> Here we go again, guys. Wow! Yeah, this guy really gets around. He's got the auto lights. American or import, we're guaranteed. Feel good. Yeah, two years, no matter how far he goes. That's why we've been everywhere. Mega. Feel good. Yeah. Daytona. L.A. Wherever we're going. The Super yeah. And we're not even tired. Perfect timing. You rejoin us on lap 192 as the green flag comes out and we are back to racing here at Darlington. Now, here's the situation. We have gone beyond the halfway point. However, we were under caution when the halfway point occurred. And so the $10,000 will be rewarded to the driver on the fifth consecutive green flag lap. Davey Allison has not had a very good restart here. He's lost a position to Rusty Wallace. He has lost a position. He's moved down to try to protect his position so Rudd doesn't get by. Meanwhile, here comes Rusty Wallace on the inside of Dale Jarrett. There's one green flag lap. On the fifth, the $10,000 will be rewarded. Now, another thing you have to realize is that it is reported that rain is very close to this area, and so the drivers are going to be trying to get up front in case it rains and uh, we don't restart. However, <laughs> we'll see. And Davey got back by Rusty, and now he closes in on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett. He did, you're right, he just did not get a particularly good start. And Dale didn't really get a good start. Those three lap cars uh, got in front of him there. Now Davey really working on him, trying to get the 10,000 and also trying to get up front. But Dale Jarrett has never led at the halfway point. He's not going to, ooh, he went high there. David tried to get under him. Couldn't quite do it. Dale's car has been, each time on restarts, has been going high in the first and second turn. He shoots off of that turn. Greater went up the banking and almost hit the wall in the second corner also. I think that these cars slowed down more than Schrader thought they were going to, and he had to go up the bank to avoid running into the back of someone. Under green, two more to the Gillette Halfway Challenge and $10,000 to the leader. Jarrett leading at the moment. And the driver that has been leading at the halfway point has won seven of the first 20 NASCAR Winston Cup events. Boy, David closing in, coming off that turn. He has some momentum and he has a lot of power. He just yeah. moves right on around. Jarrett's going to try to get back on the inside, but 
Allison has too much steam down the straightaway. He's not able to do it. And Ricky Rudd trying to get by Rustin Wallace. So Davey Allison could be looking at a million and ten thousand dollars. <laughs> How that ten thousand is just a drop in the bucket, huh? Compared to a million dollars, it is. <laughs> what they call chump change. This is the money lap. Whoever is leading when they come down wins $10,000. Not the million yet, but 10 grand. And there it is. Allison is the leader at the halfway point. Davey Allison wins the Gillette Halfway Challenge. He takes home the $10,000 award. If you have entered the contest and are called at home and can correctly identify Davey Allison as the winner, you could win the Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Lake Speed car going very slowly down the front stretch as several are going very quickly through the third and fourth turns. Shredder went by Rusty Wallace on the outside going in turn three to take that spot away. Here comes Kowicki up on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace. Very, very gutsy move by Schrader to pass on the outside going in turn three. Maybe on the inside of Derek Cope. Ricky Rudd on the road. He's up to third there now behind Dale Jarrett as they goes around Derek Cope to put Derek left down. Derek's real fast on these restarts. Suit though, so is Rudd. And now Jarrett uses that low line coming off of four. That's that Kyle Petty line. Yep. Speaking of Kyle, there he is running with Ernie Irvin now. Back there with Harry Gant and Brett Bodine. Harry Gant had to make a pit stop, uh, a second pit stop, went and tightened some loose lug nuts that the had left uh, loose, so. Way this way back to the back. 13th and 14th. This is the roof cam on the GM Goodrich Charlotte. Look at those dark clouds. <laughs> but they, there have been dark clouds since the race began, and it hasn't rained yet, so we'll hope that it doesn't rain the rest of the way. There is a little bit of moisture there on the camera lens, but it could have been from a car and not uh, moisture falling from the skies. Jarrett, Rudd, Schrader, all battling for position. Second, third, fourth. Three Chevrolets chasing that forward of Davey Allison. And speaking of that, the manufacturer's points race is quite interesting as Chevy trails by 22 points from Ford. Ford has 140 points, Chevy 122, but a GM product has won the last nine of the past 11 races and the last six in a row. Now the Western Auto. Race recap, Davey Allison has led nine of the 200 laps. We've had three caution periods for 17 laps. 17 cars on the lead lap, and the average speed is now below the record at 131.87 miles an hour. Those that have picked up five bonus points for leading a lap include Ernie Irving, Sterling Marlin, Davey, Harry Gant, Ted Musgrave, Ricky Rudd, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, and Bill Elliott. Out of the race... McFadden, Hilton, Sauter, Michael Waltrip, Little, Potter, Shepard, and Marlin. Shepard and Marlin, the two most recent to drop out because of the crash. Tony Glover leads the point standings in the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year race. Donnie Richardson second, followed by Tim Brewer, Steve Meal, and Larry McReynolds. Battle still goes on with those three Chevrolets. Second, third, and fourth. Jerry Rudd. All of those engines in those three cars are built by Hendrick Motorsports. Probably not much difference in the horsepower of those engines. I guess you're probably right. You know, with Davey Allison, we talk about big rains. We talk about rain dances and, you know, for props and all that. Like, you're a million dollar pretty good prop. <laughs> <laughs> they should have had somebody here to do a rain dance. That's right. They had to have some.
somebody seeding clouds or something about exactly. this point. <laughs> there should be some airplane above us right now going sweater it is they throw in the clouds to make it rain. <laughs> now Davey closes in on Hot Strickland once again, and an auto light field summary will show you the standings as they were the last time they crossed the line. Staying out there, uh, Jeff Bodine and Hutt Strickland staying out in front of David. That's the trio of Fords. This is a huge advantage for those Chevrolets because David right now is not running as quick as he as his car is capable because he's being held up with these cars. So they're trying to stay in the lead lap. Here's David on trying to go on the inside of Hutt, can't make the pass. But meanwhile, while he slows down trying to get by these cars, those Chevrolets. Are staying, or actually probably gaining a little bit. I think they're gaining a little bit right now, Benny. David makes a run on Hutt coming off of turn two, but does he have enough momentum to get back going into turn three? I don't think so. Nope. So, this lap. so Davey Allison leads, trying to put a lap on Hutt Strickland and Jeff Bodine as he is being pursued by. Dale Jarrett and others. Welcome to the Sundowner Restaurant in beautiful downtown Northville. At the Sundowner, we take pride in using only the freshest ingredients, and we prepare all of our items daily, from our freshly baked breads and pies all the way to our fabulous homestyle turkey. Come enjoy our brand new menu edition, Broasted Chicken, cooked to juicy perfection. And remember, all of our meals can be catered for any size function. Visit the Sundowner Restaurant today. We're open Monday through Saturday, 7 to 9, and Sunday, 7 to 8. Look for us at 80 West Katy Road on the back side of the Mags building. Read all about it. Surplus day puts the plus in surplus with the big selection and extra friendly service. That's right, Surplus City does put the plus in surplus with footwear, leather coats, winter coats, work clothing, hunting, and camping apparel, plus a relaxed atmosphere with personal one on one service. Extra, extra, everybody is going to Surplus City for extra selection and extra friendly service. And you should too. Surplus City for the plus in surplus on Fold Mile Road in Berkeley or in Wayne Road in Westland. That was our secret play, and they're killing us. It's like they got ESP. Nope. They've got ESPN. See why NFL Game Day is the show the pros watch, Sundays at noon Eastern. Back at Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina, where Davey Allison leads the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at the end of 209 of the 367 laps. And that's the guy that could win a bonus of one million dollars and he's where he needs to be to win long way to go in this one though pretty awesome isn't the fact that the guy can win a million bucks in the stock car race I'm telling you. oh i started to say a long time ago and i was interrupted by that crash that uh, bill elliott is going to exceed a million dollars in total winnings for the 1992 season in this event here's some side-by-side -side racing speaking of bill elliott he and Ernie Urban are battling for eighth position. Urban grabs it. He lost about three or four thousand. That little deal there, but maybe he can get it back. Lost four points, and well, I mean, you know, that, there's four points difference in those two positions. Despite yeah. the fact this is Labor Day weekend, there's relatively little racing action. Two big events are here in Darlington and the U.S. Nationals NHRA races next Sunday, however. A couple of good events coming up here on ESPN at 8.50 Eastern Time next Sunday morning. It's one of the uh, greatest Grand Prix races of all, the Italian Grand Prix from Monza, Italy. That's at 8.50 in the morning, and then later in the afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, we'll have live coverage of the Pioneer Electronics 200 IndyCar race from Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. Both of those events next Sunday. And Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by with a comment on Davey Allison. Bob, as we see Davey some almost effortlessly driving this car on this very tough racetrack, lest we forget 
He still has two steel plates with about 18 screws holding his right forearm together, and he has three steel pins holding the bones of his right hand together. Now, he's due to have those pins removed in the next week to 10 days, but right now he's still got a lot of metal in that right hand, and he's still holding that steering wheel awfully tight. And, by the way, we just felt a drop of rain here a moment ago, and every drop we feel, the Havlin crew smiles a little more. And they say, come on, rain. Here's Rusty, Allen, and Ernie Irvin. Ricky trying to move around Rusty Wallace gets him and Rusty backs off and then Ernie Irvin takes a position as well. They see those rain drops on the windshield say hey try to get another position here if they possibly can in case it rains hard and long. Irvin start running awfully fast he's the outside pole sitter. Ted Musgrave and Dick Trickle are in this group of cars also at the back. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Here's Musgrave in the uh, no, he's not. He's a lap down. Yeah. He's 18. I'll tell you, there's one guy that's praying it doesn't rain, and that's Mark Martin. Remember, we've talked about him putting on the back. He's up to about fifth place right now, and I think he's as fast as the leader, but he's got to be on the lot lane, right, John? Tell you what, Benny, Clark is really, really showing just what kind of a race car driver he is right now. About 10 laps ago, and Harry Gantz headed down pit road right now. Mark had uh, said that the car had picked up a terrible push. It was very, very hard to drive, but they see these clouds moving in, and Mark is driving his heart out. And Gantz is in. Jerry Punch is there. Well, Harry had radioed a moment ago. He thought he had a bad set of tires, something wrong with the tires. In fact, the tires were mismatched, but apparently he developed a vibration and decided rather than taking a chance on possibly cutting a tire or possibly having a tire leaking down, they will come in under the green and change all four tires. They're cleaning rubber out of the front drill section, but a costly pit stop for the skull bench. Four tires, and he is away. We went a lap down, Jerry, and that would be a little over a lap and a half behind until he gets his speed up. I wonder if the right front was a little bit loose as well. Mm -hmm. The left front had a couple of love lo nuts loose. The right front might have been a little bit loose as well. Davey Allison continues to hang on to the lead. Lap 217. One million dollars will be his if he can win this Mountain Dew Southern 500. We'll be back to continue our live coverage of this Labor Day tradition in just a moment. We've had Old Blaze for 16 years. I mean, this Old Blaze. My husband uses it for all of his hunting and fishing trips. He and the dog absolutely love that car. Someday, when even AC Delta parts can't keep it going, we'll just park it out back so he and the dog can sit in it and reminisce. AC Delco parts, it's like buying time. In my career, I've had a lot of good things happen to me. Of course, there were a few headaches. But that's when I'd reach for a Goody's headache powder. And I'm not alone. In a recent survey, doctors preferred the Goody's formula too, by more than three to one over BC's. And only Goody's beats a headache the way I prefer, in record-breaking time. Goody's. All right. It should feel so good again. Rise and shine this weekend to ESPN Sunday Sports Day. See the bright spots of the week on Sports Weekly. Then, Dick Schaap focuses a light on major issues with the sports reporter. And don't forget ESPN's shining star, Sports Center, where you'll see scores, highlights, and previews. Set your alarm to start Sunday mornings with ESPN Sunday Sports Day. Work continues on Morgan Shepard's car as he tries to get back into the competition here at the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington International Raceway. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by NAVA because there are no unimportant parts. And by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. 
Morgan Shepard is putting the steering wheel back on, very much in hopes that he can get back into this race and pick up a few more points. There's the pin that he's uh, putting back in the steering wheel that we talk about so often. Make sure that that holds the steering wheel on. Save you again, Dennis Jenkins. <laughs> I have these billboards that I have to read, and I momentarily misplaced my copy, and Benny saved me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> On the racetrack, Davey Allison is in front. You remember three years ago, Darrell Waltrip had the opportunity to win the Winston Million. He failed to do so. Bill Elliott did do it back in 1985. And if Davey Allison can continue to lead this race as he is doing right now, to the rain or to 367, he'll pick up the bonus. We've been talking about Mark Martin. I think it's time we talked about Ernie Irvin. <laughs> because yeah. he is coming strong. Just moved into third position around Martin. Martin had worked his way up through the field to take over third, but now Ernie Irvin has moved into third. And actually, Benny, Mark Martin, I've been talking to him, Davey Allison. He's been gaining a little bit on the leader, Davey Allison, but Ernie Irvin just come by and blows him off, so that must mean that he's really there. That's right. I mean, Mark Martin is faster than the leader, Davey Allison. So what does that mean? Ernie Irvin is the fastest car on the racetrack. But there's a lot, there's a great deal of distance between he and Davey Allison. Five it's going to take a few laps to get up there. Just a fraction over five seconds. show you how much separation there is between the two. Ernie's in third. <clears throat> That's the leader, of course, right there. You can see there he is. Nothing behind. There comes Dale Jarrett in the picture. He's running second. Here All comes we'll Dale. See. Right there. Ernie. There. 4.9. Okay. okay. He picked up a tenth of a second down there. Oh, might run a official one. Jerry Punch reported earlier that Ernie Irvin has a transmission problem. He has to leave the pits in fourth gear. When he makes a pit stop, he's unable to put him first. So uh, if this thing goes green or if we should race on into the end of the race, the end of the 500-mile race, he will be at a decided disadvantage because he after having to take off in fourth gear. He's going to lose a lot of time coming out of the pits. See if the interval shortened. Oh, oh crash. Oh. Jeff Bodine is in the fence in turn four and oh. takes several. Looks like Dick Trickle and Ted Musgrave also become involved. I watched Darrell Walker weed his way through there. Kyle Petty gets through as well. Brett Harry Lodine, Gant. Harry Gant. Bill Elliott, there. their point leader. He gets, he gets through. through, okay. Three cars crash in turn number four. Ted Musgrave. Four cars. Four cars. Ted Musgrave, Jeff Bodine. Dick Trickle. Dick Trickle and Jimmy Means. Is that Jimmy Means? Means? Yeah, down on the inside, yeah. car number 52. The okay, car. yep. Jeff Bodine, who crashed initially, is, uh, has already left. Well, there you can away. see Jeff was the first. Ooh, hard and Trickle contact. And, and Musgrave, hard contact. And there's uh, me spinning down to the inside. I don't think he hit anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think he did. I think he missed that wall. And Boy, Ted Musgrave did. He went head first into the wall. And from our speed shot underneath the starter stand, watch at the top of your screen, you can see Jeff just uh, lost it on his own, it looks like. And then there was a whole bunch of cars following him, and several got in trouble. There's Musgrave going up into the wall and trickle, and then Means spinning to the inside. And you wonder if they make pit stops with the clouds out? Yep, they're making pit stops. John Kernan is in Dale Jarrett's pit. As the clouds move in, it looks rather ominous. This could be the race in the pits to see who wins the event. Dale Jarrett has several good pit stops all day long. They're working on the right side. They will also take out a round of wedge out of the right rear. The right and left side's going on. Let's go down to Jerry Punch and Davey Allison. Pit. And the race continues here for the Davey Allison crew. They have already changed right side tires, left side tires going on. Dale Jarrett already off the jacks. He's headed down pit low here at Davey Allison. We'll see who's going to make it up. Allison pulls back out. Here is Jarrett by. It will be Allison Jarrett as they head back to turn one. 138 laps to go here at Darlington. What a scramble. Davey was pitted much further down pit road. The uh, interstate batteries crew did a great job again of getting 
Dale in and out of the pits, and there is Mark Martin, who is pitted on the back stretch. And as everybody's had their work completed here on the front stretch, he is still in the pits on the back stretch. There's the battered car of Ted Musgrave as we're under caution here at Darlington. Richard Petty, the only driver ever to win 200 Winston Cup races, all on champion spark plugs. Jerry, your help out here really does make a difference in the way I run. Well, Richard, this is our testing ground. It makes a difference in the way we build our spark plugs, too. They work for me in both my cars, whether I'm racing or going home. I depend on champion spark plugs. Save up to $2.80 by mail-in rebate on champion spark plugs at your local Pronto Auto Parts stores. Hi. You know why Quaker State asked me to be their spokesman? Because I'm tough. Quaker State is tough. Tough on wear and tough on sludge. If you use Quaker State in your new car's engine, they'll guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. So, naturally, they ask me because I'm tough. You don't think it's because they think I'm oily. If she had a fever, you wouldn't wait a week to see the doctor. If she were hungry, you wouldn't wait a few days to feed her. So why wait even a day to fix the brakes on a car you drive her around in? At Midas, we don't just fix your brakes right. We can fix them right the very same day you bring in your car. Think about it. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. It's the Budweiser Pit Stop with Bill Elliott. They call it Tire Wars, and many times races are won or lost on pit road. Hi, I'm Bill Elliott. It's been said before, and it's worth repeating. A driver's only as good as his team. The Budweiser NASCAR team is one of the best. The team really shines during a four-tire pit stop. It usually takes less than 20 seconds to change all four tires and pump around 22 gallons of gas. And often those seconds are the difference between winning and losing. Live coverage here on ESPN of the Winston Million, the Mountain Dew Southern 500 from Darlington, South Carolina. And we're showing you what appears to be a very dark and very low hanging cloud over this racetrack and as we continue to pan over the front stretch here that area right there is located behind us and that guys is scary as a matter of fact i think i'll leave <laughs> if you'll just uh, do <laughs> the rest of the scary. race let's hope that thing goes somewhere else ted musgrave's car is being uh, gotten off the racetrack after a four car incident off up of turn number four we talked about airflow maybe from that cloud here's a track like on airflow from rusty wallace's car track backs are brought to you by quaker state the big q is one tough motor oil over the years, the Winston Cup teams have tried to utilize all the air passing over the exterior of the car. One use for it was by applying these NASA or NACA windows here in the side of the car to have air captured here and run through a series of hoses through the oil coolers and around inside the car and out the bottom. However, in wind tunnel testing, they learned that that was really hurting the car. How did it hurt it? Well, two ways. First of all, you were taking air in the side window that was meant to go to the spoiler and help keep the rear end of the car on the racetrack. Secondly, that air was being shoved out underneath the car, which didn't allow the car to have the downforce you needed to have to handle. So why not correct it by turning that window around? It would seem simple, and it works. Suddenly, the upper window here has the large part up front, the small part in the back. As wind forces across the opening, it creates a vacuum here, thereby drawing air through those inside hoses from beneath the car, through the cooling mechanisms, and out here. No longer have a lot of air being shoved beneath the car, so the car is nice and stable. You're actually pulling air outside this window, shoving it toward the rear spoiler to give the car more stability in the turn. You solve the problem by simply turning the window around. Aerodynamics on a NASCAR Winston Cup car, and here are some, uh, again, black clouds that are overhead at Darlington. I'm glad we can't see that. That's behind us, or I'd be scared to death. And the wind has definitely kicked up. There's the yellow flag that is being displayed, and Jerry Punch goes from uh, a garage to the pit area with Bill Elliott. 
Problems continue for our current Winston Cup point leader. You hear him speeding away in the background. He was not a happy camper. He'd just been on pit road a moment ago. Apparently, they have brake problems in the Budweiser Ford. We thought they had lost all the brakes. The crew were out to try to stop the car when he came down pit road. They have lost the right front brakes. They added fluid to those brakes and they tried pumping them. He just came back down pit road. And of course, he had a problem here. They had to change tires and find the left front lug nuts. So problems again for Bill Elliott. We'll be back with more racing from Darlington after this. Stay with us. You know, I've messed up on a few relationships in my life, but there's one that's lasted over 35 years with a lot of help from Quaker State. It's tough on wear, tough on sludge. So Quaker State and I are planning on a meaningful relationship with my new car. So why don't you do the same with your new car's engine, and Quaker State will guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. You think if I gave Lonnie the Quaker State deal, she'd give me the same guarantee? <laughs> Quaker State is one top motor oil. If I thought that no one cared, about the things I do in life Well, I'd still care about working hard And making it turn out right Made in America That means a lot to me Oh, I believe in America And American quality salute with pride what all Americans know in their hearts. The American workers' commitment to quality is stronger today than ever. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Nothing beats the quality of the American spirit. Folks in these parts think Tom Lawton is the best thing to ever turn a wrench. But back east, They'll put their money down on the guys at McClellan's. It seems in every town there's always one place that does a little bit better job fixing your car. And it seems the things they all have in common are great mechanics, great service, and Napa parts. Look for the sign of quality car repair. Napa. Benny uh, recognizes your invitation and uh, will try to make it if he possibly can. Where is that, New Jersey? That got to move his head. What is that, New Jersey? I think it was New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the clouds overhead. Man, oh, man. It hasn't rained yet, though, and hopefully it won't, but look how dark and low those clouds are. Anyway, we are going to go back to green next time around. There's Doyle Ford indicating one more lap before green. Well, let's show you what's coming up here on ESPN the rest of the day. That Arlington Million Horse Race coming up live at 5 o'clock tonight with the premiere of our jockey cam. Baseball tonight's at 6 o'clock. NFL primetime at 7. And then Major League Baseball tonight on ESPN features the Red Sox against the A's at 8 o'clock. Sports Center will wrap up all the day's activity for you at 11 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. Elmo Langley is the driver of the pace car. He looks pretty calm. Set on the pole one time. Yeah, and way back on. While we're talking about uh, former winners of this race, uh, 1965, was it, Ned? Long, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Elliott has been in and out of the pits numerous times during this caution. I believe he has remained on the lead lap, but he's come close a couple of times. Yeah, and he's going to be uh, over a half a lap behind Bob as they get the green flag, and he's just going out of the pits on the back stretch, or going up the back stretch, I should say. Harry Gant down there trying to get his lap back. I'll bet he can do it as fast as that car's going to go. Despite the ominous weather, the fans are staying in their seats to watch the end of this one. Davey Allison is the leader as we restart this race on lap 236. For those of you and Dave Allison's car is a little bit off the pace coming off that turn. Look how quickly Dale Jarrett and Harry Gant ran back up there. The last restart, you know, he went down into turn one. The car just wouldn't go for him. They just had to go now. There's Gant trying to move on the inside of Dale Jarrett. David got a good jump on that restart, moved out in front of Harry Gant. And then it 
of you just joining us if that number 28 Haviland Ford can lead lap 367 or if we should have rain before then if he can win this race Davey Allison will collect a bonus of one million dollars Barry Gant trying desperately to get his lap back he has been one of the fastest cars on the track but he made an unscheduled pit stop for a change of tires went a lap down trying to get back in the lead lap with that hope for a caution Jerry confirms what you guys just said, that uh, the, the new tires just don't stick very good when you step on the gas, but once they get heated up, they're okay. Early Marlin coming back out after spending a lot of time in the garage area when the Maxwell has Ford. The reason Davey is eligible for the Winston Million, if you can win three of what they call the big four races in NASCAR Winston Cup competition, you win a million dollars. If you win two, 100,000, Davey one Daytona and one Talladega. And so if he can win today, he'll win the million. There is Sterling Marlins, Maxwell House four that doesn't look very good, but he's back out there. Things continue on as they have been throughout the day. Harry Gant's car will get a little bit stronger as we go on the few laps. Davey Allison's car will fade a little bit, and Harry's car will get stronger. Unless Davey Allison had just been saving a little bit of while and he decided to unleash it here because he has been off the pass since the halfway point. Again, Gann is 14th. He's a lap down trying to get his lap back. Oh, Mark Martins. Oh, excuse me. I thought he spun on our second quarter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was just 45 degrees. He is slowing. Marcus hadn't had a bad race. He's 18th, a lap down. They got a lap down early in the race on a long green flag run during the pit stop exchanges. Ever see Harry get? He is in front of Davy Allison. Now then, he wants a caution flag, but not for rain. He right. just wants a, you know, a hamburger wrapper on the racetrack or something like that. Not for rain. Not for a wreck. I'm sure Dick Fabian and all the officials are... Checking the sky, making sure, talking to their spotters in the corners, making sure that the... If the race were to end right now, there would be a 58-point separation between Davey and Bill. And so he would almost, uh, well, it was 109 going into this race. So it could about 50 or 51 off of him. Well, here is what happened to Mark Martin. This is why Benny almost had a heart attack. I just had me watching this as he come, and come off the corner and watch that. Ooh. <laughs> Irving pulled up behind him. Might have taken a little bit of air off the spoiler. I don't know. Well, might have been a little bit of contact. You know, I just but mentioned Dick Beatty and have to think about it. Uh, he told me the other day he's going to retire at the end of this 1982 right? season. Well, there have been a lot of speculation on that, that he might do that. I'm sorry to hear that, but yeah. I'm happy for him. I mean, he's, he's given a lot to the sport. And we'll lose deserve to sit back and uh, take it easy a little bit in his mountain home up in Ash County, I believe, near West Jefferson, somewhere in North Carolina. And one of our regular NASCAR officials, Morris Metcalf, uh, went, underwent uh, coronary surgery, uh, bypass surgery, or I guess is going to. Yeah, oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, yeah. He's got 75% uh, blockage of the left coronary artery. Now, Jerry, I don't understand all this. Uh, tell me about it. <laughs> Well, well, you know how you have a valve job in a car? Well, that's sort of what's going to happen to Morris Metcalf. <laughs> He's going to have surgery in 
in Forsyth uh, County Hospital in Winston-Salem next week. He's going to have a mitral valve replaced, one of the valves that separates the two chambers on the left side of the heart. He's going to have four bypass grafts put in. And Mars is out to be back in time, maybe uh, for Atlanta. So he's already planning to be back in Atlanta, and we all wish him well. We certainly do. He's a fixture in the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit, and uh, we wish Morris the best in his operation this coming Tuesday. Ernie Irvin he's moving inside of Schrader. Move, isn't he? Yep. Boy, this car is so fast. And did I hear that John Turner's mom had some surgery this past week or something? Seemed like the, all the entire crew had medical problems. There you can see Irvin. Uh, Schrader battling out of the racetrack just behind Ricky Rudd. The sixth or seventh position. Happy birthday today to Andy and Jean Jeffers. A lot of birthdays here in the first week of September. We're not wishing to have a birthday in No, I don't want you to. It reminds me how old I am. Here goes Ernie. There's some smoke coming out of the back end of that car, guys. Ooh, a little tar smoke right there. It <laughs> got a little loose, but yeah, didn't they say a little bit earlier that there was a uh, transmission yep. leaking a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, Dick Kirk's car down the inside. He's slowed down. He's all that damage on his Snickers Sport. Well, all this action is behind the leader of the race, who continues to be Davey Allison, on his way to collecting the Winston Million in the Mountain Dew 500. From the moment you step into Heinz Park Lincoln Mercury, you know it's a different kind of car dealer. Family owned and operated for over 20 years, Heinz Park has built a business on customer loyalty. From their award winning sales staff to their state of the art service department, Heinz Park makes your car owning experience all it can be. That's why generation after generation of families keep coming back, because Heinz Park is out to treat you right. Heinz Park Lincoln Mercury on Ann Arbor Road at I-275 in Plymouth. The look of an exquisite Italian tailor suit is as close as downtown Plymouth. Milano is the only custom tailor shop in Plymouth that guarantees a flawless fit. Milano's master tailor and owner alters each suit in the tradition of fine Italian tailoring. Milano's now carries a fine selection of men's sportswear, leather jackets, and men's leather shoes, along with a full line of women's suits and accessories. Visit Milano, where quality and tailoring go hand in hand. Located next to the Cozy Cafe in Plymouth. It's one of the premier races in America that traditionally draws an international field of the finest thoroughbreds. The Race to the Breeders' Cup continues at the Arlington Million, Sunday at 5 Eastern, live on ESPN. Seventeen laps to go in the Mountain Dew Southern 500. Ernie Irvin is just passing cars right and left. He is really moving. As we said, he's got a transmission problem. He doesn't have anything but fourth gear, so every time he makes a pit stop, he gets up to third or fourth. He has to go all the way back. And look at his smoke oh, now. Yeah. Ooh, That's going to be more than tire smoke there, Ned. Yeah, I think that was more than tire smoke. No question. Well, Ernie Irvin, while he's passing cars, we're seeing a lot of smoke. He's in fourth position. Now the wick is fifth. I started to say when he makes a pit stop, he has a lot of trouble getting out of the pits. Goes back about 10th or 12th, and... He's fighting his way back to the front again. Look how bad the thing smokes this time down Yeah, it's still pretty bad. You know, it is. Ernie has finished twice in this race on two different occasions, both 1990 and 91. doesn't bother that part, does it? No, it doesn't. Here's and Rusty Wallace has called Jerry. He has called you. This is for second place. The Interstate Battery Chevrolet second. Miller, Jingling Draft, Pontiac in third. And Ernie Irvin, that we've been talking about, is in fourth. Not too far behind this video. Trying to look. Oh, a little bit of contact there. I don't know if it was contact. 
Yeah, Jared's car is pushing coming off the turn. And uh, he doesn't need the cloudy weather. He needs sunshine. <laughs> there, Rusty gets second place from Dale. And now Rusty is on pace with his best finish of the year, which was in North Wilkesboro when he finished in second. This is probably the best finish that he's had all year, or tied for the best finish, but he's not doing a rain dance. <laughs> he wants this thing to go all the way because he has vision for winning yep. the Southern 500. Look, Ernie has caught this, caught Dale Jarrett anyway. Oh, that smoke Man. is really bad now. They're saying it's the transmission. If this thing only holds about a quart of fluid in the transmission, so once that gone, it's it's over. And smoking like that, it's not gonna last long. Pass cars. Here he moves to the inside of Dale Jarrett and takes over third spot. Ooh, oh, touch a little bit. Slides up. There are several drivers, as we indicated earlier, that are still looking for a win in 1992 after they visited Victory Lane in 1991, including Rusty Wallace, Schrader, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine. And Dale Jarrett. Those five drivers won last year but haven't yet in 92. Rusty Wallace is catching Dale Jarrett at the rate of about two tenths of a second to left. Mm. We understand that uh, NASCAR is contemplating a black flag for Ernie Urban because of the smoke and the possible grease or oil that he's putting down on the racetrack. It took break for him, but I see Mike Chapin there, the assistant flagman. He has the black flag in his hand. They're looking for him coming out of turn four. Is he going to be? Yes, he yes. is. Black flag is being waved for Ernie Irvin, who had moved up to third position. Jerry? I checked in the Ernie Irvin pits a minute ago. It is apparently it's the same problem we had before. It's a transmission problem. I asked Larry McClure. I said, is it the transmission? He said, yeah, but it's just a small, small leak. I said, Larry, that's sort of like me telling someone it's a very, very small bullet hole. But, of course, a leak is a leak, and it's got to be fixed. So they're going to bring the car in. And what we've got it here in the car comes down pit road, I want to show you our cameraman is with us all year long, Corky Corcoran. John Corcoran, he and his wife, Paige, had a little boy about a week and a half ago, and Corky did not miss a single beat at Bristol, Tennessee. James Austin Corcoran, born eight and a half pounds on August 18th, and John Corcoran, as you're looking right now, did not miss a single day of work in Bristol, Tennessee. And now we'll watch his camera show us Ernie Irvin's crew go to work on the Kodak Chevrolet. And you see the smoke now boiling from underneath the front of the car. Irvin's crew will try to correct the transmission leak as they change right side tires and look at the car. Ernie Irvin losing a lot of very valuable time here in the pits under the green flag. He has already gone one lap down, Jerry, as they let the car down. Well, let's see. They're still holding it. Now going to jack the other side up. Seconds tick away up to 30 now. What happened? They'd already taken the lug nuts off the left side, and the crew didn't realize that. They said, well, we're not going to change left side, but the lug nuts were already off. Larry McClure was conscious, of, conscious enough to go over the wall and say, hey, guys, we got to change the tires. While we're watching that in the pits, Rusty Wallace has cut Davey Allison's lead down to less than a second. There is Davey Allison going into turn one, and you can see there is Rusty, one car between them. But he is definitely gaining on Davey Allison. There's Lake Speed in the Pure X Sport. He's running 28. Now there's nothing but daylight between Wallace and Davey Allison. And you say, well, couldn't Rusty Wallace and Davey Allison make a deal? You know, I mean, it's a million bucks here, guys. A little percentage at least, huh? But I'm telling you what, Davey Allison wouldn't take this big, I mean, he wouldn't trade a million dollars for winning the Southern 500 right now. That's for sure. Here's Jerry. Now, as you're noticing some smiles behind me, it may be because we're beginning to see more raindrops than we've seen all afternoon. We've even had reports that it's raining about a half a mile away. Now, it's rained a little bit in the afternoon, not enough to make the track wet, but we're going to watch it very closely. The clouds, very ominous here, right behind the tower where you guys are. But I think there's a real question as to whether Rusty can hold, rather, uh, Davey can hold off Rusty because he's within car lengths now, John. 
remember earlier I told you about how Buddy Parrott had told me this morning that as the race wore on, that Rusty would run great and would make a move toward the front. He must have been one heck of a weatherman to know that this big cloud was going to come over and cool this race track down, change it the way it has. And you know, one other interesting note, Buddy won a race here with Darrell Waltrip back in the late 70s. They used nine sets of tires. Those nine sets of tires didn't cost as much as two sets today, and they've got 15 here today. <laughs> Cost of racing goes up, doesn't it? Ernie Irvin is still being black flagged. He's uh, run four laps now without coming in, so uh, he will have to come in again. We're talking about Ernie Irvin. Meanwhile, look at this. Rusty. He's there. Right there. Mark Martin has moved into third and is gaining on all of them. Here comes Rusty on the inside. Takes the lead. Rusty Wallace goes into the lead on lap 265. We are 102 laps away from the finish of this event, and Rusty Wallace has taken the lead from Davey Allison, trying to deny Davey the million-dollar bonus. But we've got a long way to go in this one, so stay with us. It isn't over yet at Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. a lot of good mechanics that shop at AutoZone. Well, you also have a lot of people who just want to save some money by doing a simple job themselves, like changing their oil or putting in new plugs. They just want to come in, get what they need, and get out. Well, at AutoZone, we have parts for just about every car made. So if you know what you want, great. But if you're not quite sure about something, no problem. We'll help. After all, that's what we're here for. Two days only. Save 10 to 50% on every gallon of paint at Sears. Exterior paint as low as $4.99 a gallon. Interior paint as low as $4.49 a gallon. But hurry. This sale ends Monday at Sears. Hey, is that... Yeah, it's my new Wagner Power Painter. Can you edge with it? Yeah, like this. In fact, it'll take care of just about any project you've been meaning to do. Why am I painting this by hand? Get a Wagner. It's impossible to watch all the NFL action on Sundays. Right? Wrong. See every bone-crushing hit, every big score, and every key play from every game in just 60 minutes of non-stop excitement. Football's fastest hour when you're hungry for action. NFL Prime Time premieres Sunday night at 7 Eastern, only on ESPN. residents of Roswell, New Mexico, next time you see Reba the Savoy congratulate her because she won a Lumen of this afternoon in the Gillette Halfway Challenge. If you want to enter the contest for next week's Miller Genuine Draft 400, write to Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33731-2246. You have to be 18 or over. And we must receive your entry by Friday, September 11th for that Saturday night race at Richmond next weekend. Reba Savoy, age 66 of Roswell, New Mexico, is going to be tooling down the streets next week, enjoying her new movie. Now, don't you know she's going to look good right now? She car. sure okay, is. Real That's... happy for her. Congratulations. <laughs> Mark Martin looking pretty sweet right now, but those will stop the front two cars. Here it's we a are. Three car battle for the lead. Rusty, Davey, and Mark. And here goes Mark on the inside. Takes second away. Rather easily. Here it comes right up on the back bumper of Rusty. Now can he take the lead? Mark Martin looks to the inside. He will not make a move down the back stretch in the three. If Rusty goes up the hill in front, trying to drive under him. Here's another battle for position. This is for eight. Schrader and Petty. Kyle has it. They've battled a lot today, those two cars, haven't they? Yeah, they seem like they've been yeah. together just about all race long. Yeah, Kyle's pitting on the back stretch, Schrader on the front stretch. Okay, Mark Martin looking for a place to go. He's up right on the back bumper. Ooh, he might have had to back off a little bit there. He did have to. Remember last week at Bristol when he ran up on the back bumper of Dick Trickle and hit the back of the Snickers forward? Mark has been... Oh, on the outside, look at this! Wow! How about wow! That? At Darlington? Now, come on, you guys have told me since we've been coming here that you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
And look, Davey Allison goes by Rusty Wallace. Rusty might have used his tires up getting up there to the fight. He really rammed that car hard and abused it a little bit, and the tires might have gone away a little bit on him. You know what sad is, Rust, or rather, uh, Mark Martin has been working since last pit stops to get up to this point, and in a few laps, he's going to have to go back into the pits and do it all over again. There's well, another caution flag. Yeah. Yeah, but if he stops under green, won't bother him. Right. Mark Martin now leads Davey Allison and Rusty Wallace, and we should see pit stops in less than 10 laps. And so, as we set up to cover these pit stops, we will take another break. Mark Martin has gone to the front, Davey Allison is now second, and Rusty Wallace is third. When Daryl Waltrip needs tires, he needs the right tires, and he needs them fast. And when you need tires, see the tire team at Western Auto. We've got major brands and over 26 tire lines to fit your car, van, or light truck. Right, Junior? Right, D.W. And we got the right price, backed by our free ride guarantee. Right, Rusty? Right, D.W. When you buy tires from Western Auto, try them for 30 days or 1,000 miles. If you're not satisfied, they'll exchange them. That's why I take our car to Western Auto. Right, Dad? Wrong, D.W. D.W. takes your car to Western Auto. Know what's wrong with the world today? No one cares about doing a good no job anymore. No one cares anymore. about doing a good job anymore. Napkin? Thanks. Quick fix, slap it together. Refill? Thanks. Courtesy, efficiency, punctuality. Is that too much to ask? Nah. Hot food and fast, friendly service guaranteed. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Finish, Mr. Martin? Thanks. You're welcome. Show me a place like that, and I'd give them all my business. Why, I'd never leave. <laughs> You know, I've messed up on a few relationships in my life, but there's one that's lasted over 35 years with a lot of help from Quaker State. It's tough on wear, tough on sludge. So Quaker State and I are planning on a meaningful relationship with my new car. So why don't you do the same with your new car's engine, and Quaker State will guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. You think if I gave Lonnie the Quaker State deal, she'd give me the same guarantee? <laughs> Quaker State is one tough motor oil. The Winston Million on the line at Darlington, South Carolina in the Mountain Dew Southern 500, which right now is being led by Mark Martin, the driver eligible for that Winston Million. Davey Allison is running in second position. Martin goes by Morgan Shepard, Jeff Bodine. A couple of cars that crashed earlier today. And Rusty Wallace has really dropped back. He has dropped back to fourth position after making a brilliant charge to the front. There's Davey alongside Richard Petty, who is 20th, three laps down. We continue to hear reports that rain is coming, but we have had none so far to speak of. Just a few drops, nothing serious enough to throw a caution. But our cameramen and spotters say they're beginning to feel it and see it coming from over our heads as we are here on the front straightaway. There's Mark Martin leading the Southern 500. You know, I'm sure he had a big drill today uh, meeting the governor of Arkansas, the Democratic candidate Bill Clinton showing him his race car, introducing to all the team. But Clinton went straight to Mark Martin when he got here to be the fact that both of them are from the state of Arkansas. Mark, of course, from Batesville. Ooh, Bay came up on Wally Dallenbach real fast and almost. Oh, that'd be something. Look at the Rangers teammates. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's gone. Yeah. 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 Coming into the pits. Gan slowing and coming in. Terry was in 13th position. I Went a lap down, so came in. Th I think this will be uh, scheduled pit stops. Mm -hmm. Rick Mass going out in the Skull Classic Mesmobile. His crew didn't think it was going to rain in the next couple of laps. I think he would have had enough fuel to go in a few more laps. We're just trying to get out, and uh, we see Dick Trickle back there with some other the car working on that sticker for it. Yeah, it's been in for many, many laps. Gant working on the left side to get that 
debris out from the front of the car, and Harry's on his way again. He's now two laps down. There is Mark. On the back straightaway. Ran third here in the Trans South 500 at Darlington in the spring. Won Martinsville not too long after that. And is leading here this afternoon. This for scenario. All the key, all the cars pit, and then starts running. Bill Elliott is running 12 wins the race because he stays out on the fuel mileage. Oh, well, Atlanta, Atlanta or Atlanta. whatever. Wouldn't be the first time it happened this year. <laughs> That's right. Because at Atlanta it wasn't because of rain, there but a are. caution did come out of the right time. There are a lot of uh, crew chiefs planning strategy here. Here's the Mark Martin team. Again, he's on the back stretch on the other side of the racetrack here on the front stretch, the Haviland team. Dale Jarrett just went around Davey Allison to take over second, so they're expecting him to come in pretty quick here, I would think. And here's Jerry. Well, you guys are exactly right. He said they're expecting the Davey Allison to come in. They've just called Davey in. They were trying to hold him out as long as possible. By their calculations here, they felt that possibly Martin Martin would have to pin around lap 290, which is about six or seven laps away, but they are expecting now to bring Davey Allison in. Rain or no rain, they can't afford to run him out of fuel here at Darlington and possibly lose a lap and lose a chance at the Winston Million. So they got to roll the dice. We're watching for Davey to come out of turn three and four and possibly make an entry on the pit road. Not this time, Jerry. He stays out this time around. Crew is ready, but Davey isn't at the moment. Dale Earnhardt does come down pit road, as you saw there in the background. Sign board is in the hands of Larry McReynolds, so Davey is probably going to come in this next time around. Alan Colwicki has come in, and so has Dale Earnhardt. The Childress crew working on that car. He spent many laps, by the way, behind the wall with a clutch problem. Here comes Davey Allison. Rusty Wallace will follow him down pit road as well. They're going to have to stop again, guys. I don't think they can make it the rest of the way. They're going to have to stop again. Davey working his way down the pit road. Rusty comes to stop. Here's Jerry. We are 81 laps away from the conclusion here, and Davey Allison shot at the Winston Million. The crew now having to be very deliberate. They have changed right side tires, taking the left side lug nuts off. They will come around and make sure they do not have any miscues. No left lug nuts gone. Left front tire goes on, left rear. They got the car completely full of fuel. Maybe sitting very patiently watching the cloud. 20.9 seconds as he is down and headed back to turn one. Pretty good pit stop. Rusty Wallace is just now pulling away from his stall. It was a good pit stop, but they are left down to Mark Martin. Mark yet to make a pit stop. How long can he go? There is Mark Martin. I'd be surprised he doesn't dive in the pits, right? Yeah. Okay, Mark, go ahead. Run that way. Make a yeah. liar out of it. There's Rusty Wallace. Yep. Yeah. There would be two down right now. He said it would be two if Mark catches him, but the rest of those new tires on, he'll drive away from, from Mark. And Mark keeps waiting for it to rain because I mean, right at turn one, you can see the rain is right there in turn one. It just won't rain. What you call scattered showers, and fortunately, they have scattered goes, away from us. Now he he's coming off the accelerator and down to the pit area. John Kernan, he is headed your way. Mark had previously planned to pit two laps from now, but they decided to bring him in a couple of laps early because it's the Davy Allison's actions coming in on pit road. A while ago, we told you it had a push in the car. Well, once the track cooled down quite a bit, that went away, and the car started running really, really fast. In fact, Mark's been one of the best. This car has been the, one of the best cars we've seen on tire wear all day long. It will be a four-tire change. These guys, under caution, had a 19.2-second pit stop. We'll have to see if they can equal that. Right sides are already on. Second can of gasoline on it. And left side's going on. They will need one more pit stop, though, to finish the race. The front of the grill is clean. And Mike Martin is down in the lane. 19.7 seconds. Dale Jarrett's the leader of the race now, isn't he, Ned? Yes, he is the leader. He, uh, of course, will have a pit stop coming up sometime in the near future. He's losing time on the racetrack of those who have made pit stops with those fresh tires on. 
But now he's coming into the pits right now. And Jerry Punch is going to be there, ready for Jerry to come in. Terry Labonte comes in the pits in the Sunoco entry. Jerry, Jerry coming towards you. Thank you very much, Ted. Yes, indeed, he was losing some valuable time. So Dale Jarrett brings the Interstate Battery Chevrolet to a halt. Remember, Dale, a two-time winner here at Darlington. Both those wins coming from the Bush Grand National Series. Get to go to Victory Lane in the Winston Cup car, having a great one today. They clean a lot of thick rubber from the grill in the front of the car. Having changed right sides, now left side tires, really working hard to clean the windshield. The windshield literally covered in oil or something, possibly out from an evening. Those guys have been exceptional on pit road today. His crew has got him in and out very, very quickly. So now with most of those who are running up front having made pit stops, Ricky Rudd has not, and he has the lead. I thought Banana George Blair had found the fountain of youth. I'm 77 and still barefooty. You'd be half right, because the one he's found is actually for his car. With a little armor all protectant, George restores the beauty of his dashboard and seats. And in minutes, it helps protect his tires from fading and aging. It keeps my car looking almost as good as me. There is a fountain of youth, and we own the patent. Armor all. I hope my teeth don't fall out. This season, Bill Elliott's doing something he's never done before. He's driving the 670 horsepower Budweiser Thunderbird. But only after Junior says it's okay. Quality motor oil can go a long way toward protecting against engine wear. But by adding STP oil treatment, it can go even further. Because STP increases even the best oil's viscosity by up to 50%. It's that simple. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kearney, Dr. Jerry Punch back at Darlington International Raceway for the Winston Million running of the Mountain Dew Southern 500. Now, here's the circumstances at the moment. Daryl Waltrip is the leader of this race. He has not come in for a pit stop. Rudd was a leader. He came in. The lead is now in the hands of Daryl Waltrip, and there is reported to be rain in the area. I didn't think you'd ever get to that. It's raining. Well, not enough to throw the caution yet. <laughs> Mark Martin just told the NASCAR officials it was okay. I saw Mike Chapin turn around, and here comes... I say Waltrip's coming in, but he's not. I saw him turn around to the tower and said, Martin said, it's okay. What are you going to do if you're Daryl Waltrip? You're going to stay out there and you run out of gas. <laughs> the yellow is out. The yellow is out because of rain. Daryl Waltrip is in the lead. If it should come a downpour and they're not able to restart this race, Waltrip would win again. Well, how much gas does he have? Yeah, he's going to have to stay out there. Of course, he can't come in and give up that lead. Or If he comes in the pits, he loses his lead. That's right. Ricky Rudd tried to race Darrell back to the line and get a lap back, but he's now a lap down to Darrell. Darrell Waltrip has won here at Darlington four times, but he has never won the Southern 500. And there you can see on the front windshield of Morgan Shepard's car that the rain is beginning to come down a little bit harder. It's, it's raining pretty good over in turn one. Brent Bodine and Bill Elliott had not stopped either, so they're up there in, in good shape. In fact, they're being shown in third and fourth position. Mark Martin back to second. And, of course, Davey Allison's chances are hurt dramatically by this because he is back in fifth. But it's a long time till dark, fellas. And, oh, yeah. And NASCAR will wait uh, a good while before they won't call it just because it might rain right now. And we're 71 laps away from the official finish of this race, so they will try to get it in, all of it in, if at all possible. But right now, rain is falling on the racetrack, and the caution is out. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, Doug Reichert is standing here beside me. Doug, how far <coughs> can you go on fuel? Well, uh, under green, we were able to go probably three, maybe four laps if we had to. When the rain started coming, we were going to stretch it just as far as we could and hope for this caution that we got. Uh, 
If it goes much longer, we're going to have to come in. So you wanted to see the caution, but you'd like to be able to have it rain heavy in a hurry. It needs to run, rain real heavy right now, and that's what we're hoping for. But, uh, yeah, we can deal with it if it don't. Uh, the Western Auto Chevrolet has been running good. The crew's been doing well. So we're going to pray for the best right now. Uh, they're smiling here in, in DW's pits as they are possibly getting it set uh, for a pit stop. Let's check in over in the Mark Martin pit. I tell you, Steve, you guys just you just made that pit stop about eight, nine laps ago. The rain comes down. You're posted second. I guess the only thing you can do now, hope that uh, we get this, we don't get under a red flag situation or that Daryl runs out of gas, huh? Yeah, well, we're pretty hard-headed. We don't race the weather. We race the racetrack and the people on it. The thing to do was to come get tires and try to beat people that already got them, and we're in real good shape. If we don't win, we just didn't win. You can't control that. But we come a long ways all day, run a half lap further than everybody based on the, how we had to pit back here. We're disappointed, but we're happy with our performance, and it ain't over yet. How was uh, how hard was it to keep Mark calm? Because you'd, cut, you'd be running out front, come in here and pit, go back out 10th with a 19 and a half second pit stop. Uh, he never said a word. You know, the guys had great stops. They were real smart about it. They did the right thing. Mark worked his way up through traffic. We had a good car, so we could get through traffic all right. It's just a matter of communication, but Mark was never upset about it. Well, Steve, a uh, NASCAR official wants to talk to you right now, so guys, we'll throw it back up to you. Well, Steve Meal is absolutely right. Mark Martin has come back from being uh, a long way back in terms of position on the racetrack to take the lead, and now with the rain coming down at Darlington, the question is, will we be able to get started, and will Davey Allison still win that million? For the best place to dine in Plymouth, visit the beautiful Mayflower Hotel. Voted the best hotel in Michigan for 1992 by the AAA Michigan Living Magazine. Come sample our Sunday brunch in the Mayflower Meeting House. Unwind in the Crow's Nest, a London-style pub featuring the entertainment of D.L. Turner. Or take advantage of the best restaurant value of the year. Seven ounces of filet and a quarter pound of crab for only $9.95. For reservations, call the Mayflower Hotel at the corner of Main and Ann Arbor Trail in beautiful downtown Plymouth at 453-1620. Someone could become a millionaire in less than 22 seconds. Find out who will cross the finish line first in the Quarter Mile All-American Futurity, Monday night on ESPN. The red flag tells it all. The race has been stopped. The Southern 500 is under red because of rain on lap 298. The field is lining up on pit road behind the pace car with Daryl Waltrip's Western Auto Chevrolet, the first car behind the pace car. Now, it's not raining real hard here on the main straightaway, but it definitely is raining hard enough to stop this race. It isn't a downpour as yet. But with this uh, situation arising, you, you gotta consider that it's gonna take a while for the track to dry. And so we're looking at probably uh, a little bit before this thing can get back underway and it is raining hard it's, I guess in parts of the racetrack it's going to be a downpour yeah. in just a moment yes so uh, I know <laughs> Daryl Walter going to see a downpour and he's getting <laughs> one or it's going to be one here in just a second yep. that was turn one that we were looking at let's go down to Jerry Punch who is with Davey Allison well I stuck my head in the window a moment ago and he was able to smile a little bit here as Davey still sits in the car Davey, uh, you, you ran up front all day and waited for rain, and now you pit, and the rain's come. Yeah, Jerry, I had a feeling that was going to happen, but, you know, you got to take some chances in this business, and old Texaco Havlin Thunderbird's really been working good all day. Mark Martin's awful tough. You know, I don't know if we got anything from him or not, but, and Harry Gant had a tough break. I hated to see that for him. But we're having a good time, you know. I feel good right now. You got to feel like that uh, if we could get it restarted, you got enough in the car to be able to have a good shot at the million. Well, we just made an adjustment on the car, and it really seemed like it helped it. And, uh, you know, we were just going to try to take it easy. Mark had a big lead on us by the time everybody else pitted. 
we were going to be back to second place with a pretty big lead over third, but it just didn't work out. You know, lucky break for the Budweiser crew, though. Well, lucky break for them. Now, how's the hand? Physically, uh, you're sitting here, you're sort of squeezing a little bit. You okay? Well, it's pretty good. You know, uh, just a little stiff, but it ain't enough to keep us from going the rest of the way. A big smile from Davey Allison. He knows they still have a good shot at picking up a million dollars as he will try very gingerly to climb out of the car as the range really starts to come down here. And he uh, banged that arm trying to get out, and now he will climb out as the fans now wave at a young man who has shown a tremendous amount of courage here these past four weeks. Bob? It's amazing what Davey Allison is thinking about. He's not even worried about who won the race. He's worried about the Winston Cup championship. He was talking about what a break Bill Elliott got because he was back in about 11th, 12th spot. He stayed out there. He now is in third spot ahead of Davey Allison. Allison was going to gain points. Now he's going to lose. And Davey, you can tell the frustration. What a break that Budweiser crew got. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If the race were to end right now, Elliott would pick up third place points and Davey would pick up fifth place points. Both of them have led a lap. And so all that Davey has been through and the great race that he has had is going to end up in a deficit because of, uh, of this rain. But it is not over yet, friends, although, as you can see, the rain is falling quite hard now and the track is getting very, very wet. Interrupting the Mountain Dew Southern 500. All of these championship winning drivers have one thing in common, Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the world's best selling line of high performance street tires, Goodyear Eagles Street Radios. The champions know, and it's why we say, the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. The pennant chase is in your face on ESPN. See our Tuesday night twin bills. Wednesday night excitement. Friday night double headers. And America's Game of the Week. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Sunday night, speedster Ricky Henderson sparks the first place athletics against Wade Boggs and the Red Sox live on America's Game of the Week. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Under a red flag because of rain in the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington. Leading the race at the moment is Daryl Waltrip. Second place is Mark Martin. Here's Jerry. I tell you, when Mark Martin climbed out of the car a moment ago, these fans really gave him quite a bit of applause. Mark, not only for the effort you put in today, but a tremendous show yesterday. And uh, it's raining, but you've had one well of an effort today. Well, we were, you know, against uh, such tremendous odds, I never expected to win the race. When we started, uh, unless we got off a lucky anyway, we had such a fast race car, and I want to thank Jack Roush and Steve Neal, Valvoline Folgers, and uh, Ford. And I'm going to tell you what, we were on the best Goodyear radio I've ever been on. My car would just keep on, keep on. The longer we would run, the better we'd, we would do. And I got to believing that we were going to win a race after we took the lead there, and we... They were calling the splits, and I'd got like a seven-second lead, and we were coming in to make our pit stop, and I knew we had a big enough lead that when we came back out, we were still going to be leading because pitting on the back stretch didn't really matter under the green. And I thought, it's over for these guys if it goes green the rest of the way. And that rain started, and I just said, no, tell them it's not raining. You know, let's run. We got to run. Disappointment yesterday, but uh, the range could move out. We still may have a shot. Does, does anyone run with you? Davey seems pretty tight, but uh, you seem like to be the class. We just got the fastest race car on the racetrack as of right now. Uh, other people have had real fast cars. Uh, Davey's been fast at times. The four car, which is out of it now. The 33 car, uh, I don't know where he stands right now, but I feel like that under the right circumstances, we can outrun anything here, but we can't overcome uh, caution late in a race because we'll be 10th or 10th every time you know if if the cautions will kill us if we can run all the way i think i think uh you know we're in good shape but if we have uh, many yellows it's just uh, impossible to overcome that half a track uh, you know deficit so mark martin says let the reins quit let the caution stay away and i'll win it here at darlington today back upstairs hey, let's check in with john kernan who's with the weather radar john what's it look like around here J jerry it's these types of uh, days I wish I would have 
paid a lot of attention to meteorology classes in college, but here's the radar. This dot right here is the Darlington uh, International Raceway, and you can see the green around that area, around the racetrack, is a little bit darker than the rest of the green. That means that it's raining pretty hard right here, which you know from standing outside. And this uh, system is moving through at east-northeast, and we have not uh, been able to determine about uh, how fast it is moving, but it looks like uh, we're on the edge right here, and there's a few holes in here, so we may be okay. It looks like uh, about 10, 15 miles from the racetrack is where this band of showers is, and it's, uh, as I said, moving east northeast, so we may be okay. We haven't been able to determine that uh, just yet, but we'll keep you updated. You touched on the Benny Parsons method of uh, weather <laughs> forecasting. There. What was look that? outside or go outside and look <laughs> up in the sky. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, you can see some breaks there in the clouds, but it's, hard. it's raining real hard right now. Very hard, and everybody is extremely wet. <laughs> if the race were to be called right now and not restarted, Let's take a look at uh, how the field would be with another Napa field summary. They're the top five with uh, the million dollar bonus not being won by Davy Allison. He would be in fifth. Nine cars on the lead lap. Ricky Rudd, a lap down. So that means if Mark Martin did make a pit stop, he said he'd come out 10th. Well, really, ninth is mm -hmm. the worst that he could come out right now with nine cars on the lead lap. Richard Petty, 19th. Wally Dolan back 24th, and Ernie Irvin, who's had uh, an up and down day, would finish 25th. Ted Musgrave uh, was involved in a rather bad looking accident up in turn number four, would finish in 30th. Dale Earnhardt 29th. <laughs> Look at DW sitting there. I'm the, he said, I'm the smartest guy around here. <laughs> He's the leader right now under red. Is he sitting in the rain? Surely. Looks like it. Surely he's got sense enough to come in out of the rain. He's just, he's just sitting here relaxing in the uh, CW. Would you like some sunscreen? Ah, you know, I'd like to see what's going to happen here. I, I got a pretty tough skin. I may not need no sunscreen today. It, it is drizzling just a little bit. Well, you know, I hate to, I don't know what to expect here, you know. I mean, uh, we're leading the race and it's raining. That's good. How long it's going to rain, we don't know. And so you got to sit here with a little bit of a knot in your stomach and wonder. But while I'm sitting here, I am going to enjoy myself. Jerry, get through uh, that umbrella. Let it get wet. Love you. All right, so uh, he, he to wanted to wet. sit here, so we're going to walk away with the umbrella. And, honey, and uh, It don't matter if I get a cold or not. Don't worry about it. I'll be okay. <laughs> hey, you talk about a happy race driver. Let him lead, and he'll sit out here and let it just pour down rain. <laughs> DW winning last week. Hey, the proud papa for the second time. Uh, his wife and two little girls sitting at home watching him, probably wondering why daddy's a little bit uh, different. And uh, <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> what? I, I got a classic for you. What's that? I don't mean to be a smart aleck, and it might quit raining, and I hope it does so Davey might have a shot at the million. But somebody down there asked me how much gas I had left in my tank. I said about a million dollars worth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be a smart aleck, but that's about how much is left. Oh, I'm sure Davey does not want to hear that as D.W. sits here and enjoys the showers in Darlington. Guys, it would be a Waltrip weekend. Michael won the Bush Grand National Race here yesterday. Daryl is the leader under red of the Southern 500. This season, Bill Elliott's doing something he's never done before. driving the 670 horsepower Budweiser Thunderbird. But only after Junior says it's okay. For age-old problems like these, Goodyear introduces a brand new solution like this. Goodyear Wrangler GSA. Goodyear Wrangler GSA has a unique triple tread zone that gives you breakthrough, all surface, all season traction, mile after mile, year after year. So if you own one of these, you need these. Goodyear Wrangler GSA. Then you'll know why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Back at the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina, where it is raining and raining very hard at 298 out of 367 laps. Here's John Kernan with Bill Elliott. 
Well, Bill, you're sitting in there third position. Uh, for a while there, you had to drop back. You had a little bit of a problem there in the midpoint of the race. Can you tell me about that? Well, we broke a brake line or something, and I ran out of brakes. I didn't have any brakes. I just kind of rode around there. And lucky enough, a caution came out, and it was a long enough one that we closed off the brake caliber on the right front, and all I got is left front and the rears, and it drives terrible with all, you know, I have to pump them up going in the corner, and then we just lay up front. It turns the car real hard getting in the corner and makes it real loose. And I really have to be careful around traffic. I can't jam the brakes on or anything. Now you're sitting in third spot looking pretty good. Are you having you guys do a rain dance too? Well, I think everybody is. But, you know, it's a situation of whether it stops or it don't. And you know, we've had a good day, and regardless of what happens, we're in a lot of race left. And, you know, we'll see what the good Lord gives us. You no, know, you're the points leader, but you don't seem to be act like it. I mean, there's no pressure now. You're just this old pro. You know how to handle all this stuff, don't you? Well, it's pretty much, if, regardless of what happens, it looked pretty down there when I first ran out of brakes, and I was just riding around there because we'd had a real bad day. But, you know, a caution came out. We were fortunate enough to pick up a, 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 some spots there, and the car's running decent enough that, uh, you know, I kind of hang on there, and at least we're still in the lead lap, and I think I can stay on to it, you know, with with the more than, you know, 70 or so laps to go in a race. Well, if the race were to end right now, you'd be 119 points ahead of Davey. Is that a pretty good cushion to have this late in the season? Well, it keeps winding down, but we'll just wait and see. Uh, if it starts back, you know, Davey can beat me, and uh, regardless of whoever's in the middle of us and where we end up or how things go, we'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, it could go either way, and there's a lot of races left. And out right now, we'll just have to take it a race in time. We had our problems today. We're fortunate enough to be where we're at right now, but, you know, you never know what the weather's going to do. You know, Bill's a pilot. He has to deal with weather all the time and filing flight plans and describe to him what the radar looked like. And then he looked up and he said, well, it doesn't look like this is moving very, very quickly. So Bill's probably more of a meteorologist than I am. And he said that everybody's hoping for uh, the rain to continue. I know one person that is, and that's Davey Allison. He's fifth and, of course, would not win the Winston Million if we were not to go back to racing. Well, speaking of million, there's a million dollars guaranteed in the Budweiser Racing to the Breeders' Cup coming up next from Arlington Heights, Illinois, and they debut of the Jockey Cam, which I know you're going to be interested in seeing. That's coming up right after our event here, the Arlington Million from Illinois. Back at Arlington after this. She's an 83 with over 140,000 on-road and off-road miles. I must be in and out of it 150 times a day. It's a wonder the doors don't fall off. Only trouble was when the pig charge caved in my door. I only used AC Delco. Cheaper parts can cost you a powerful lot. Of course, so can pigs. AC Delco parts. It's like buying time. Hey, is that what I think it is? Yeah, it's my new Wagner Power Painter. Well, can you edge with it? Yeah, you can edge like this or adjust it to control the paint up close. And when I'm done, I'm gonna switch nozzles and stain my deck. Do a lot of other jobs I've been meaning to do. Well, does it clean up easy? Yeah, it's quicker than you think. Why am I painting this by hand? Good question. Get a Wagner. me something really special for my birthday a whole weekend in the great outdoors without me here's to the great outdoors men who understand and comfortable blue jeans wrangler It is a very wet Darlington International Raceway that we welcome you back to as the Mountain Dew Southern 500 has been stopped because of rain this little girl is not minding at all. She's a little wet, but uh, still is hanging right in there. She says, what am I supposed to do, Mommy? <laughs> you wave, that's it. <laughs> John Kernan is with Kyle Petty. You know, guys, I, th I'm having deja vu experiencing it right now because the last time it rained and Kyle and I were standing together, he wanted me to uh, take it to a higher authority. <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminiscent of Watkins Glen, huh? Yeah, but it hadn't gone to a higher authority yet. Here it hasn't. <laughs> I don't think so. Not yet, anyhow. 
Looks like it's coming down pretty good out there right now, uh, so maybe over. Pretty good run for you, despite being handicapped a little bit by pitting air on the back stretch. That's what we were talking about with Mark's guys. Uh, you know, Mark's run a, a great race, probably the best race out here all day long to come from 10th or 12th, back to 1st and 2nd, and then go back to 10th or 12th. And, you know, you, you give up seven or eight positions each time, and there's nothing you can do about it. We just got had a bad qualifying one, run on Friday, didn't get an opportunity to qualify on Saturday, so it's just the luck of racing, but it's something that kind of hurt us today. Well, if we need to take it to a higher authority, I'm sure Kyle will force me to do so. Let's go uh, out to Dr. Jerry Punch, who's with Brett Bodine. Jerry, is it dry where you are? Oh, it's about as dry as an ocean over here, guys. Uh, it's coming down pretty well. And I tell you, one driver, we, we mentioned taking a poll. Some guys want to see it stop. Some guys don't. I believe uh, Brett wouldn't mind seeing it continue to rain. Brett, you've had your troubles. Yeah, we really have, Jerry. It just seems like today, if it's going to happen to us, it's going to be today. We got run into uh, early in the race. The left rear panel's knocked out of the car. I'm getting a lot of... Uh, fumes in the car and it's awfully hot. Uh, we've had mechanical problems in the pits with uh, air guns and jacks. And we, we've lost a tremendous amount of track position there. And now uh, the car's overheated because the grill got covered up with uh, uh, rubber and uh, it's thrown all the water out of the car. And I'm about out of fuel. You know, well, Daryl and I stretched it there trying to, we saw the raindrops coming. We tried to stay out. Uh, we're sitting good, but if this thing restarts, we could be in a little bit of a trouble. Now, if it doesn't restart, you're going to get your first top five finish of the year. So it's been a good weekend for the Bernstein operation uh, car owner over 301 miles an hour yesterday up at Indianapolis. Well, I'll tell you, you know, that, that team's really awesome. Uh, they, they really have their act together when it comes to punching out those high mile an hours. Uh, Kenny really wants to win that championship, and I hope he does it. You know, it means an awful lot to him. He's a tremendous competitor. I wish we could have run a little better today, but... Uh, if it takes a little few rain, a few, I say, a few raindrops for us to get a top five, we'll take it. We've had a, a share of tough things happen to us to keep us out of the top five earlier this year. Well, carbon monoxide, they're out of gas. There's no water in the engine, and it's raining. Other than that, it's been a pretty uneventful day for Brett Bodine. Let's go up and check in with John Kernel, who's standing by with Dale Jarrett. Well, Dale Jarrett has... <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of took you by surprise there, huh? You got this live TV. Yeah, uh, you never know when you guys are going to be around, so you have to always be on guard. <laughs> it, it had a great run going today up front, and then you had to pit. It's kind of an uh, aggravating situation to be in, isn't it? Well, it is, but, you know, it's it, it's part of the game. You know, when you come out of here, you know that can happen, and uh, we had a really good car. Uh, the crew, first of all, has done a fantastic job in the pits all day long there. Uh, we, we beat the majority of the guys out most of the time and uh, just done a fantastic job there. And the cars drove well. We're not the fastest car on new tires. The car's a little bit tight. It hurts me down in one and two a little bit there. But as we go on, I know that I can make that time back up. Uh, the six car, I don't have anything for him. And as nobody else here, uh, except maybe Harry, and he's a lap down. But uh, uh, I can beat anybody else here in long runs. And uh, Jimmy Makar has done a really good job of getting the chassis set up. Especially not having any practice, you know. We we basically went back to the setup that we had here in the spring. We thought we had a pretty good car then and uh, had a problem. So uh, we're pretty happy right now. In a situation where you had, like yesterday, you only had about 15 minutes of practice, you ran the Bush Grand National Race, ran so well in that event. Can you apply anything you learned there to uh, get the car set up for today? Yeah, we tried to take some things that we had learned there yesterday. Jimmy was on the radio with me yesterday during that race and, and on top of the truck spotting for me and knowing what the car was doing. So we tried to, to take some things and, and put it into this car, and uh, you know, it's, it's worked relatively well. Uh, uh, the engines run awfully good. Uh, Rick Wetzel and these guys have done a great job getting us a good motor, and, and all of those things come into play here. But uh, I think running yesterday did help me, especially with only 15 laps of Winston Cup practice. As Dale Jarrett, who uh, is very interested in what happens today, but I'll tell you what, he's probably very interested in what happens tomorrow night when his team owner's uh, team, the uh, Washington Redskins, open this NFL season against the Dallas Cowboys. All right, thank you very much, John. Well, if we were to end the race right now, if this race does not go back to a green flag, it'll be the third rain-shortened Southern 500 in history. The last time the event was stopped early was back in 1987 when 202 laps were completed and Dale Earnhardt won. Welcome to the Sundowner Restaurant in beautiful downtown Northville. At the Sundowner, we take pride in using only the freshest ingredients, and we prepare all of our items daily, from our freshly baked breads and pies all the way to our fabulous home-style turkey. 
Come enjoy our brand new menu edition, Broasted Chicken. Cooked to juicy perfection. And remember, all of our meals can be catered for any size function. Visit the Sundowner Restaurant today. We're open Monday through Saturday, 7 to 9, and Sunday, 7 to 8. Look for us at 80 West Katy Road on the back side of the Mags building. Come into Laurel Furniture this week and save big on every mattress in the store during the Serta Mattress Clearance Sale. Every model, every size, and every firmness is on sale now. You can get twin sizes starting as low as $69.88 each piece when purchased in sets. Even Famous Perfect Sleeper is on sale now starting at $399.88 for a queen set. If you've been waiting for a good night's sleep, wait no longer. Come to Laurel Furniture now and save during the Serta Mattress Clearance Sale. Laurel Furniture on Ann Arbor Trail in downtown Plymouth. Now you can own the Best of Sports Center on home video, featuring superstars, amazing plays, wacky bloopers. Now on home video. Still raining at Darlington. The Mountain Dew Southern 500 stopped at the end of 298 laps. Daryl Waltrip is the leader right now. Now. Coming up right after this event, the Budweiser Racing to the Breeders' Cup, the Arlington Million, live from Arlington Heights, Illinois, and the debut of the Jockey Cam. Don't miss that. And then later tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, you'll see Sunday Night Baseball featuring the Boston Red Sox against the Oakland A's. That's 8 o'clock tonight Eastern Time, Sunday Night Baseball. Jerry Punch is with Darrell Waltrip's car owner. In the papers this morning, it said that Darrell Waltrip's car owner was going to give his driver a bonus of a million dollars if he just kept winning. Now, we called up with DW's car owner, and uh, what do you think there, partner? Well, well, old Darrell is doing a good job today, but him, I'm very good, but he looks like a win away, and uh, I'm going to have to go home and buy a million dollars and give it to him. He's done a pretty good job last week. Now, now wait a minute, now Darrell sat out in the rain, and, and the car owner's got an umbrella. Well, that boy's dumb. He's a driver. You, get, you don't drive a dumb a dozen. You can get anybody to drive a race car. Yes. We got a great pick crew. You don't got a great pick crew. Yeah, good pick crew. That's why my boy going to win a race. Pick crew. See, that's a veteran car owner. He can he can compraise a pit crew. That way you don't have to give him a raise. Uh, these guys have done a heck of a job today. Now, you think that uh, if the rain does stop, that your driver can hold hold them off? Oh, yeah. He's been playing with them all day. I've been telling him to hold him back. I hold him back all day. He's been like that. Well, that's the car owner down here for the Western Auto Chevrolet. And, in fact, it was said in the paper today that this car owner would give his driver a million dollars. And uh, I wonder what the car owner's wife has to say about that <laughs> back in Franklin, Tennessee, guys. I like that. The driver is dumb. <laughs> All those car drivers are dumb, he said. <laughs> well, if we don't go back to racing, Darrell Waltrip will win his second consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup event, but the rain is still coming down at Darlington. You can ski a live volcano. Take a dip in the Colorado. Take your bike way up in the blue. Get your tidal wave and go. You can slide without the snow. But you've never done nothing like a diet do. Full tilt taste. You won't believe it's a diet. You can leap. You can fly. Take a ride in the sky. But you've never done nothing like a diet do. You've got to be tough to run with this crowd. That's why 28 of 33 pit crews at Indy use Craftsman tools. The tools so rugged, they're guaranteed forever. Because in this neighborhood, only the strongest survive. 1,600 Craftsman hand tools, made in America, guaranteed forever, only at Sears. You can count on me. When tone meets leather with instantaneous velocity, the laws of force are set in Rotation motion. Rotation with constant acceleration equals a torque acting Total on Total energy plus potential energy causes rotational kinematics and constant acceleration of rigid and free-falling bodies. Saturday, Iowa State collides with Iowa. Then the early favorite for the ACC title could emerge when Florida State faces Clemson. College football on ESPN in a class by itself. Labor Day weekend rain at Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina has stopped the Mountain Dew Southern 500 with 298 of the 367 laps completed. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Quaker State. 
The Big Q is one tough motor oil. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Well, here's the situation. NASCAR is not going to make a decision until at least 5.30 Eastern time. That's about 42 minutes from right now. However, we're going to, as, as Daryl Waltrip, who is the leader of this race, does a little bit of rain dance and says, come on, keep falling. We're going to send you out to Arlington Heights, Illinois, at 5 o'clock Eastern time for that horse race that we've been talking about all afternoon in the debut of the jockey cam. However, we will keep you updated. Now, remember, even if the rain were to stop right now, it would be an hour or so before they could get the track right. So you're not going to miss a thing when we send you to Arlington Heights and that horse race. We will continue to keep you updated on the conditions here at Darlington throughout the afternoon and evening. Let's go down to John Kernan. Bob, I tell you what, looks like the rain's starting to slacken up just a bit down here in the garage here, and we've caught up with Ken Schrader. And Kenny, I could have sworn I saw you running well today, but now you're telling me the car is not running very well? No, the car ran good for a long time, you know, and uh, we run fifth, sixth, seventh there, you know. I mean, we kept working on it all day, but uh, all I know is it's raining, and we're sitting out there 14, so that's not real good right now. You said that uh, maybe they're getting ready to write the checks right now. You're not too pleased with sitting there in 13. Well, somebody just come by and said, well, you run pretty good all day. I said, they're getting ready to write the checks now, though, and 14th don't pay near that good. You know, we uh, documented the fact about the, the neck problem, the surgery. I know a lot of people probably want to know, uh, are you back to 100%? Yeah, neck feels fine. Uh, Dr. Jerry Petty did a super job on it. I mean, I raced, you know, 10 days later, and it felt super. Well, Ken Schrader is always doing a lot of racing around. His neck is fine. This is probably really tough on him to sit here. And another guy who likes to do a lot of racing is with Jerry Punch. Well, right now, John, we're doing a little bit of lounging back here in the Skull truck, and I'm with Harry Gann. And, Harry, uh, you manage to smile, but uh, right now you're, you're showing a lap down until uh, Daryl Pitts. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it's probably going to rain, I think, here, but uh, we just uh, can't seem to get our lap back. We, you know, run, got back out in front, but uh, the caution didn't come out, so we never was able to take advantage of it. You've had some bad luck. You came in, had a good pit stop, a couple of lugs didn't quite make it on. You had to come back in. Uh, that cost you a shot at the 10 grand. Yeah, we was, uh, we, we sure didn't need that caution cost. We was, uh, you know, had a good set of tires. The car was really hooked up good. And, you know, we were just stretching on out and really, really saving the tires. You know, we was going to get a lot of distance out of those tires. And, uh, you know, I felt like I'd have a lot of people a lap down by the time we come down the pit. People were saying there may be three cars to beat out there if you're on the lead lap, the 33, yourself, the 28, and the 6. Could you beat the other two? Well, I'd have to be on the lead lap to see, you know, a lot of things change. The track may change after the, after the rain here. Uh, our car's been good all day, but you never know when they, and what the track conditions are doing. Harry Gant lounging here in the trucks. Let's check in once again with John Kernan. Joe, cut up with the pole sitter from today, Sterling. Sterling, you were running so great that all of a sudden the car just didn't want to turn, flat tire or something? Well, we well, we'd run good and we broke air rates on stop and had to go way back and uh, picked way back up through there and went out in one and uh, the car just wouldn't turn. I mean, it had to cut all the way to the left and uh, went straight to the wall and it wouldn't hurt too bad and uh, started in the back straight away and was trying to get you know, pull down to come on in and get the tires changed, and, and it wouldn't turn again. So uh, I slowed way down, and I don't know what happened. Just, just wouldn't turn. I, you know, hated directing other boys, and uh, but wasn't that what to do? Well, he's going to keep plugging away. You know, I don't think anybody's had as bad a luck as Sterling Marlin has had to run as well as he does, and to have not won a race yet. It'll happen sooner or later. 28th will be the final placing for Sterling Marlin if we do not go back to green. It's still raining, but not quite as hard as it did, so there's still hope that we can get the remaining laps of this event in. We'll take another break and be back in a moment. With each new day, you find a way to be your best. Gillette Sensor for the closest, safest shave ever. You know you got to be a little better. Only Gillette Sensor has spring-mounted twin blades that sense and adjust to every detail of every face. Gillette Sensor. When you're the best, there's no feeling like it. Gillette, the best of Hi. You know why Quaker State asked me to be their spokesman? Because I'm tough. Quaker State is tough. Tough on wear and tough on sludge. You use Quaker State in your new car's engine, they'll guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. So naturally they ask me, because I'm tough. 
You don't think it's because they think I'm oily? Today, performance cars come in a variety of designs, sizes, and even prices. So do Goodyear Eagles, the world's most successful line of performance tires. There are all-season Goodyear Eagles. New ultra-performance Goodyear Eagles. There are Goodyear Eagles for the classic and for the contemporary. No matter what performance car you own, there's a Goodyear Eagle priced for you. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. NASCAR Mountain Dew Southern 500 Winston Cup race is under a rain delay at Darlington International Raceway with Daryl Waltrip, the leader at the moment. Let's give you another field summary here and show you uh, where everybody is running. And this could be the final rundown. We say could because it is slackened up just a little bit and NASCAR will make every effort to get this uh, completed race in. And uh, if we do go back to green, these standings will jumble, of course, but uh, this is the way it is right now under the red flag. Some had made pit stops. Some had made pit stops and some had not. Just before that caution came out, of course, Daryl Walter, Bill Elliott, and Brett Bodine were three of the most notable ones that had not stopped, and so they're up there in the top five. Michael Walter finishing in uh, 35th position, and there you see the final three that dropped out early in the going. Here is John Kernan with Rusty Wallace. Tell you what, Rusty, you have to feel really good about this today. It's been a while since you've been up there leading the race and running as well as you were. Yeah, the car's really running good. It's got a good, strong motor in it. We're just turning our preamp right out of frame, and it's really making it run. We told the guys earlier, so we don't have nothing to lose. We're so we're down to points. So let's twist the motor until she blows. And she's really running strong right now. And the car's handling good. And great pit stops, man. It's just really good. You guys uh, made your run to the front there at that one point. Then you started to fall back. Did you just drive the tires out from under you? Well, I've only had seven laps of practice since qualifying. And we just threw a setup in it based off our old records. And so, you know, we were kind of shooting crap, state of truth. And uh, I told the guys that we're going to have to crank wedge all day long. And I've been hollering on the radio. And we've been wedge in, wedge out tire pressures, everything in the world we've been thrown at it. And we reached our limit how far we could go, and the car went backwards. So we went back, and then it went forward again. I chased Davey down and caught him and went on. And the bite, I drove so hard to catch him. Once I caught him, I was out of tires again. Well, Rusty won't be out of tires if they restart this race. He's got four stickers on set. He is ready to go. He wants to get this race restarted. Now, Jerry, I wonder what Daryl Waltrip's up to now. I've got two amateur weathermen here with me, guys. Now, Daryl Waltrip says he thinks he hears it thundering. There, 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 I think a storm come. Bad storm. Look over here, man. It's getting dark. Oh, I can hear it clearing up. You hear it? I can hear them clouds leaving. You know what? I think I'm going to go to my truck. This looks like it's getting serious. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's nine cars on the lead lap. We started back. Uh, at least one of them's out of gas. We know that, that Brett Bodine's low on fuel. Somebody else has been over here sweating a little. I can only run 11 more laps, and then i got to come in. <laughs> I was just kidding him. I didn't tell him. I didn't want to tell him, man, because I didn't want to hurt. I didn't want to depress him. But you know, I can go maybe 11 more laps. Why'd your face turn so red when you said that? <laughs> let's go. To, hey, tell the truth let's here. go down to Western Auto and buy some Havilland motor oil. Won't you? <laughs> now wait a minute. If it stops raining and they get it dried, it's going to be uh, getting close to dark. Well, you know it. As long as they it got Q-beam spotlights at Western oh, Auto, too. As long as it keeps doing this, uh, I'm, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Davey, uh, standing here awful calm, thinking about that million dollars. Ain't thinking about that million dollars, because right now, if this thing does end, we've got our first top five finish in the Southern 500, and we turn our record around. So we're pretty happy. We run our kind of race today and stayed out of trouble. I ain't running to Daryl or hitting nobody <laughs> else. And <laughs> ain't running into the wall yet. So. We were just bragging about that. He hadn't run into anybody. I hadn't run into anybody. We've had a pretty neat day, and I've never won the Southern 500. This is his best finish. I mean, you know, I think that's enough to call it. <laughs> you, talk, you talk about optimism. There's one big family down here, and they're all smiling, having a good time. Even though it's raining, everyone's enjoying it, folks. And if the race were to end right now, here is the way the points would shake out. Elliott would remain on top. Kowicki, Gant, and Martin, third, fourth, and fifth. Sixth through tenth in the quest for the cup standings. Kyle Petty, Daryl Waltrip would move to seventh. Ricky Rudd, eighth. Dale Earnhardt would fall to ninth. And Morgan Shepard would fall from eighth to tenth position in the point standings. There's the documentation. It's still raining at Darlington International.
Demonstrate the incredibly realistic color of Kodak Gold Plus film. Just open the box. No other print film captures a wider spectrum of colors at any speed. Kodak Gold Plus film. True colors. More colors. All right, back here at Darlington, here is the situation. NASCAR will not make a decision until at least 5.30. The rain has let up enough that they have sent the safety vehicles out onto the track in an effort to at least keep up with the rain and try to get this thing dried off as quickly as possible when and if it does start rain, uh, stop raining. Now, we're going to send you to Arlington Heights, Illinois, in about one minute for this uh, great horse race that we have scheduled for you, the Budweiser Racing to the Breeders' Cup. The weather is much better there, we hope, and the jockey cam is about to make its debut. We will keep you updated on what's going on here at Darlington, but, of course, the track will take a long time to dry, even though the safety vehicles are out there trying to keep it dry. The situation is rain.